Hello and welcome back, everyone. We are here continuing as Paraguay, entering our ever, you know, never-ending confusion as we load in to what we played a week earlier and are not exactly sure where we came from, where we're going, these sorts of things. I believe we're going to be getting electricity this episode, and so we will be generating such power, as it were. Uh, we also are already involved in a play, and uh, this play looks pretty straightforward for us. We're going to be banning slavery in New Granada and protectorating New Granada. We have the help of Mummy herself, the Great Mummy, uh, and she will be helping us clap Spain and uh, Italy. Or two Sicilies, rather. Not exactly sure, let's see, who's involved in this. Ah, we also have... Okay, no, this is a nothing burger. And then, um, I think we can put in more war goals. And so the question is, is what do we want to put in, if anything? We could just go for war reps. We, I think we probably wait to see if they invite anyone else. Other people might want to fight mummy. We did sway her for ban slavery. We could sway with war goals on New Granada. I don't think we want to, or Venezuela. I don't think we want to do this because it's going to be, I think, uh, return state, yeah. And so we're not too interested in doing this. Uh, because we already, this is something like, um, if you're being precise about, like, uh, paying infamy, uh, you never want to give up territory of someone you're protectorating, because you always pay, you already paid the infamy up front. You pay the infamy cost up front for the territories you're taking, and so you already paid the infamy for the territory, why would you want to give it away? We got a ton of water today, because we've been working it out, so... Uh, we, we a thirsty boy. Thirsty. I think we'll just take an unpause and see how things develop. Gold depleted in Araucania? No! Just more gold mines for us. We, there is quite a bit of gold in South America. It's actually a very strong region. Uh, on that front. Uh, the main reason why it suffers, often, is that I think we'll just put two of those in the queue. The auto queue is usually pretty good at picking up gold. Um, I think that we have discrimination problems here in Freestat, and or usually this is the, the one of the main throttles is qualifications. Okay, it's not throttling us. We are doing a little bit more transportation than we can afford. So let's swap it back. That way we don't incur the throughput penalty on transportation. like this. Let's go away. Okay. Good old needing to uh, be a little bit precise about things. I think we already assigned people to front. I guess we should check. Alright, yeah. People are traveling, doing the things. I think we're already set up. Hey, Ruskov, how's it going? Thank you so very much for the donut. Is that a detergent bottle? No, but it could be. It should be. This is uh, an Arizona, Arizona Arnold Palmer light half and half iced tea bottle that we've been using for a while. The important thing is that it's a huge jug and it's got a handle. Um, although we gotta get a new bottle because this one's not possible to fully clean, so we're gonna need this. You edited the game file to make electricity a non-local good and a, and a non-tradable good like gold, and it's so much better. Yes. It would be better if they reverted it. This is kind of in my position. Well, it's a better simulation if they don't revert it. Uh, they've tried to make it more usable. I don't know how they do it. And so, yeah. But how is everyone today? It's a, it's a happy Saturday. Well, one thing about New Granada is they actually have two strategic regions, so this will give us another native strategic region in Central America, but also, uh, they will usually be defending... They will... What's what's up with this? Okay. Uh, they will usually be defending the Grand Colombia uh, node, but they won't be defending Panama, so usually you could land Panama pretty easy. Of the countries in South America, they're one of the easier ones to land. You can get achievements too somehow. You can get achievements with DLC. So, uh, to be fair, like, achievements, achievements mean a lot less, um, under a lot of conditions. Um, 
I think we'll probably take the approval, because we don't even have a bonus. And speaking of... Okay, yeah, we're doing, we're doing something they like right now, anyway. Okay, so I don't think we're going to get any new war participants here. Or it's kind of unlikely. The fact that Mexico got swayed is a little bit annoying. I think we were thinking of, of taking... California, weren't we? Was that what was going on? California. And then we decided it's not worth it, because they're very likely to back down. Yeah. They're, they're, well... Minus 35, they've... Huh. They have the reserves. Maybe they're not that likely to back down. If they're not that likely to back down, what does conquer California look like? We could also always release California. It's 11 infamy. Oh, man. Spain's gonna get clapped. Okay, then I think we want to live some stuff off of Spain. Notably Navarra, so that we can take it, because there's a really good company there, I think. We could straight up conquer Navarra, but it's going to cost more infamy because of reasons. So we can liberate Andalusia and Navarra. No, we can liberate one. That sucks. Um... Or we could liberate Mexico. I don't know. Could also just liberate Catalonia. Now, Asturias is another uh, place that has a good company. Their company is actually better, but I don't think there's any lib targets that live Asturias as well. There's not. Is there... Hmm... So I guess it's between California and living this. I don't know, maybe we take a vote. What, who should we liberate? We can liberate California. Uh, which is just a very strong state and we would eventually try and get. We would, could liberate Navarra. Which has a decent company. For iron, specifically. Or we could liberate, um... Andalusia. The idea behind Andalusia is this would weaken, uh, Spain by the most. And eventually we could try and subjugate them, this type of thing. Hey, why does GDP growth better than 1.5? Because of local prices. Yeah, local prices really kick it in the nuts. It's like, it's really hard to overemphasize this because, um, okay, let's find a building and talk about it while we do the, while we run the poll here. But local prices, uh, effectively, if you are importing this stuff from a different place, which uh, in Corrientes, we don't have iron or coal. Uh, so if we are importing the inputs from another place, which we are for all but the wood, the price of these is going to be increased and it could be increased by like roughly 10 percent and then the price of the outputs if you're not consuming them all locally it could be like decreased by like 10 percent and like it's not just like decreasing the balance by 10 percent when you do that it's decreasing the balance by a whole lot more because the inputs right represent what is this like 4k ish and the outputs represent like 6k and so if the inputs were 3600 and the outputs were like uh, this, it would basically double the balance, right? If the outputs were like 10% uh, higher and the inputs were 10% lower, the balance would be doubled. And so when you're like, when you're having to eat mappy penalties, the fact that you're like balance can be like cut in half is just like insane. So like, this is a huge one, but also they really kicked pop growth in the nuts too. Uh, and this is kind of the silent one. Um, and so uh, overall populations, global populations are way lower. And so this makes it so you run out of labor faster, so you can't like de peasant for as long a period of time. Uh, but also like, you, you just don't have enough workers. And uh, to be fair, like now you don't hit those like, I, uh, I mean, I haven't played super deep in the late game, but I haven't hit a, an instance where the problem becomes unemployment as the result of equilibrium levels of employment. Like, so... 
and I'm still adjusting, like, to stuff. Uh, actually, last stream, when we were streaming Paraguay, someone came into the chat and they were like, uh, uh, like, they said our GDP, and then what the hell? And then I thought they were GDP shaming me. And then it was only, like, 30 minutes later, I realized that they meant that they thought our GDP was really high, not really low. <laughs> But yeah, you can't you can't pop off like you could before. And it has to do for a few reasons. It looks like people are into releasing California, uh, generally speaking, and it's pretty far ahead, so we'll end the poll. And we will release California here, as well as go for some more reps. California is gonna be probably the harder one to release, but Um, that's fine. I think we'll go for Spanish and Mexican war reparations. And this will cost us no additional infamy, so if they back down, it's not a big deal. And they might back down. USA is improving relations. That must be because we're at war with Mexico. I don't know, but when you max out the tech tree, you get like 100%, which I think is uh, basically like before. You get, uh, you do not get 100%, you get 95%. And then it's like a 2% thing, but for a majority of the game, you're on this 85% um, where you're getting like this 10% like differential. It also doesn't help with the, the pop situation. You get 100% if you also have access to a river uh, that gives mappy. So like a lot of China, most of China has access to a mappy river. In uh, 1900, I got 300 million pops as RP fascist Russia without conquering Persia and China. That sounds pretty good. Trying to play with a plus 5% birth rate company and powerful devout. Interesting. I do think the company is a little on the weak side, but... Uh, yuck. Army's, like, I wish it was way bigger. But did they abandon? Looks like they aren't defending anything back here. So we're probably going to try and land California more so than anything else. It looks like uh, the UK is going to be pushing that for us. Ecuador really could use some help. Okay. This is our Indonesia army. We just have them on defend. But maybe we raise a few conscripts. Get down tonight. Let's get rid of that. So we're just going to be on defense only there. Also, I think the UK has got guys tied up in the other war. I think we'll raise our conscripts here, though. I assume we put them in reasonable kind of situations. Uh, is this guy on rapid advance? He is. Wow, we just have three really strong defenders. I think what we'll do, actually, is we'll create an army. And then we will have this, this is going to be a defensive army eventually, but we'll just recruit in some of these guys, because this guy's insane, uh, plus defensive forested terrain and expert defense, like for South America, bro's just going to be like impossible to push. Like maybe we populate this army a little bit right now. But this way we can kind of clear out... Some of the worst stuff. So let's just kind of come in and... Where do we have... Not job seekers. Peasants. Where do we have peasants? That are in... South America. Ah, we don't have a lot. I guess we're already on that... Kind of train. Right, something like this, and then when those guys come on up, we'll send them to this front to help defend. How 
How did you, you how did it make it so far with Paraguay and National Journal Entry has no progress? We have intentionally suppressed the progress of it, uh, but you get a very significant malice to the the progress on it. Um, Oh, your progress can even go negative? That's wild. Uh, we have a very significant negative one from owning non-primary culture homeland. And that's how we, like, suppress that. Because we didn't- we actually did not want that event to fire. Alright, pen and paper. What about the pen and the sword? Ugh. That's uncomfortable. Don't like that, especially with the auto queue, like the the bug. We don't like it with the bug. Conjunction it is a bit annoying with the queue bug, but also would like to get compulsory primary school in. Oh, this guy hasn't even gotten to the front yet. Pump the brakes. Which front are you going to, my guy? Okay, you're going to this front. Okay, we're super okay then. Wow, it took forever to get to that front, though. Alright. Let's just land California. California. With that guy. I think we'll promote him. Our Legion. You have around 950 GDP and 3k construction and still can't kick the peasants out. Oof. That's not ideal. Oh, where's this guy going? If this guy's going to defend up here, we will audible and land somewhere else. That kind of looks like what he's doing. If he stops at this node. Okay, so. If that's the case, we'll just land here. Guerrero, right next to the capital. And he might, we might be playing a little bit of back and forth seesaw with that gentleman there. Oh wow, we're still at minus 19 even with our power guy on the front? Okay. Uh, then, why don't we, anyone who doesn't have like expert offensive planner, we're just gonna switch to defense so we, uh, don't get involved in so many, so many pushes here. Mm, is he just gonna follow us around? Looks like he might be following us around. We'll make a decision if he stays here. Oh no, he's passing through. Okay, just passing. Uh, it looks like we're getting a very solid push here. Who is it that's pushing? Brazil? Okay. wonder if we promise Brazil anything. Also Great Britain. Great Britain's getting a push here, that would be fantastic as well. Verde uprising. I mean, these guys are supposed to be like the National Guard type, but I think we'll just send them. Well, no. We could just send the Africa Army down to deal with Maverni, I think. And I think we're going to keep these guys behind to deal with landings in case something weird happens. Although they're not exactly. Not exactly very big at this point. We have two really small uh, armies for the purpose of defense. <sighs> Alright. A lot of tax waste now. Can we do anything? Alright, let's increase taxes a little bit. Kind of... Uh, Let's maintain our legitimacy. We either want to increase taxes two notches or maintain. Let's increase two. Yeah. Actually, we have a minus uh, enactment speed, so I think we're actually going to go with this, but we might have to make an adjustment here. Has Paradox acknowledged the bug? I'm sure they're, like, aware of it at this point, because when they did their, like, last uh, bug fix release, someone commented about the bug, and they were like, what bug? And to be fair, there's, there's like, multiple employees at Paradox, right? Just because one employee is not aware of the bug doesn't mean that they're not internally aware of the bug, right? Uh, because they're not just some entity that's, like, all-knowing in regards to every one of their employees. 
And so if the person who is in charge of uh, public relations, which to be fair, is probably going to be playing the game less on average than the person like responsible for fixing bugs, if they aren't aware of something, that doesn't mean that the people who are fixing bugs aren't aware of it, right? But, um, yeah, this bug's really frustrating. I, like, I've gotten comments where people are not playing the game because of the bug specifically. Um, and I have been avoiding kind of starting a new run. Uh, ugh. What's going on with you? Oh, I remember. I remember. This is their Occupied Forever. Are they not even at war? Does that mean Russia's also bugged out like this? They're just partially occupied? And then... This is partially... Alright. It is what it is. But we're making short work of Granada here. Um, is there a reason why we would want to not finish off Granada? Not really. It'll make it a little bit harder to get some of these war goals, but I think that's, I think that's fine. All right, so we're in here with our business guys. So what we're going to do is some boyos that don't have like really good defensive traits, we're gonna recruit in and we are just gonna put on uh, rapid advance. That way we can occupy them as quickly as possible. Uh, all right, we're just gonna give you guys another defensive hero. Just trying to make sure that, yeah. Oh, we shouldn't have done that. I think he's our only trade unionist guy. And we're going for feminism right now. Fuck. We may have to fire him later. I wasn't thinking. Yeah, we're probably gonna have to fire him later. Because I think we have to use the... I don't think we can use the Intelligentsia. I think we have too many Intelligentsia generals. We don't want to fire them down. There's at least one there. Yeah. I think there's another one here. Yeah. That one's not popular, though. Maybe we could do it through the Intelligentsia. We'll have to take a closer look at that. Mistakes were made. California. Nya nya. California, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I tried Paraguay, and in your run, it felt, uh, it insta-fired because I didn't have land outside of Rio de la Plata. Yeah, we, we, like, uh, for, if you watched, like, the episode before last, we, like, intentionally became a minor power again just to make, we, like, tanked our prestige by, uh, running an influence deficit, uh, just for the purposes of not triggering it. So, like, it definitely feels like if you're playing normally, you should probably trigger it, but... Yeah, this is this is bad for them. So we will be enforcing on Mexico. You get a bunch of guys traveling to the fronts. I don't see anyone coming back, so this is gonna be, like, just full Occupy on Mexico. We do want to swap this up, though. Oh, we're already on transportation. Nice. I don't swap the PMs as much as I should. It'd be really interesting if we didn't have absolute intel on the military. This would be... So, if this was a military tactical game, I would be a fan of stuff like Fog of War. But I feel like this is an economics game and the military is a secondary thing, and so... You're talking about introducing extra player cognitive load in that, like sphere which I don't know how I feel about uh, generally I think stuff's already opaque enough that I'm not a huge fan of increasing opacity for players you haven't been playing because of the bug exactly sorry if this was asked but what do you expect the next update to drop well in the steam store it says or the next one as in 1.6 or the next really big one as in spheres of influence well, 1.6, or Spheres of Influence, 
In the DLC, it says, in the DLC store, it says that it is dropping in March. However, I read someone comment that OPB said that it was confirmed not going to be in March and it was going to be later. And if that's the case, I would expect late February for 1.6 and then, um, or something like this. All right, we're going to need, we're going to need someone to hold the front up here, actually. And you're just not even, okay. We'll move you up here. This 30 stack is trying to get there. The 30 stack might not be able to get there in time, to be fair. For what's going on. It looks like... As soon as they get to the front, we don't want to battle them. We just want to leave. We just want to hit it and quit it. Toot it and boot it. Smoot it and something. What happened? Are they going to that front? I don't know. They're chasing. Okay. That's good for us. That's what, like, th this is the power of railroads. We can move faster than they can, so if we move, battle, push the front, it just uh, creates a situation where they actually can't get onto the front. Which it probably shouldn't, but maybe it shouldn't. Wait, what? Paraguay? Yeah, dude. You haven't played as any South American journal entry. What does the country name, uh, nation journal entry do? Uh, the Paraguayan nation. This allows us to form a, like, mega country with all the Spanish-speaking countries, I believe, but it might not work for Paraguay specifically. I'm not sure. Army PM swapping is the easiest done in the military tab, so you can see all the armies and not miss one. Yeah, it is. I agree. I just, this isn't how I do it, but you're, you're right, it's probably best done in here. Like... Something like that. We're losing an interest in Dixie. I think we would really rather have an interest in Dixie than the one here. So let's do that. Because we do want to help Mexico out if the US tries to clap them. New Granada's, I think, capital is owned here, so we should be... Should be about ready to do it. This, ga uh, this game teaches how to scam, this is true. How do you become this big? What the heck? I don't know, you just do the stuffs. You just do the... Victoria 3 is about a game of, like, small incremental advantages, and if you do little things um, to, like, up your power level, like, early on, they just snowball. And so, like, this is the source of a lot of power. It's just going for this every single game. And getting gold mines. And the gold mines let you do more construction. And the more construction lets you have a bigger army. And then this allows you to pull more migrants. And, like, it's... Uh, like, uh, the effects are just, like, cascading, right? Wait, why have we not won this by now? Didn't we send a guy over there? What the hell? Africa army. Oh, we did... Why does it say that you have six units, my guys? And you don't have any artillery or lancers and you have three skirmish. Clearly, clearly a bug. All right, let's send you to deal with Maverni. Oh, it's the, do you not have a, oops. Oh no, he's got a root there. He's got a root there, all right. Can handle it. Yeah, they're just gonna get diced up here. Would not be surprised if... Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, would not be surprised if they were about ready to capitulate. I think that... I mean, maybe we won't even want a defensive pact with them. They can't be dowed immediately, though. I don't think USA is... Well, they can be dowed by USA. Maybe USA would just go after them immediately. How much does a bankroll cost? 
it's pretty cheap. Let's try and pull them into the... Well, actually, if we pull them into the customs union, I don't think they're very discriminatory, right? They'll siphon off a ton of workers. I think we just subjugate them. So... We could try and play that small ball type game, though. I think that we should actually be subs or bankrolling Argentina and Chile so that they are more likely to increase the size of their institutions. Hello, bro. Hey, bro. How's it going, Lemon? What's the highest GDP you ever got? Like, 24 billion? Something like this? But that was with when GDP was calculated differently. So it doesn't really count. I also, I, I don't know the exact number. Uh, you got clapped somewhere. I think we'll just let the, the sleeping dogs lie on that one. We could recruit another general and then be able to land, or admiral, up here. Maybe we do with our secondary navy, we're going to want another admiral anyways, but we are going to avoid recruiting an intelligentsia guy because of reasons. Because we might be trying to do the multicultural swap soon, so. Kind of want to be prepared for that. Well, it looks like we don't have the new Granada in capital. Looks like we do. Uh, looks like the UK is clapping Spain. North? Migrating from Nassau to Cordoba. Nice. Big nice. Yeah. Hopefully we get some more of those. The country name nation journal entry is used to break up the North, South, Indian, and Plantean cultures in their respective country cultures as well as block off the cultural union formables. It, yeah, it also does downstream help with uh, performance. Does California have an event to become part of the USA? No. Not to my knowledge. California usually doesn't become independent. So. Ooh. Look at this big British market. What's our infamy at now? Okay, we got a decent chunk. Uh, can we reduce autonomy here? Is there not a tab for it here? I normally never do it through there. I do it through like just clicking on them. Brazil, Sulu, Persia, Jambi. Brazil's gonna be an expensive. Oh, we're still at war. Okay, yeah, let's tidy this up. Let's have you come on down, though. I mean, we sent over this army like forever ago, and they're just not actually going. We sent them twice. There's no path. Okay, so it is bugged out now. We don't want to give up all that land, so we will just wait until they're willing to white peace. Which kind of sucks, but it does mean we'll be chilling for a while. You gotta hate the... The Shadow Realm bug. Yeah, I can't, homie can't get there. Can we please get this through faster? We're just eating this super bad penalty. Let's actually kick some of the... And we are swapping steel frame. Before we were rudely interrupted. Now, we're not going to need this much... 
what is it, administration once, like, our negative analysis wear off, but uh, it's still really bad to be running this. We're also just going to put gold on auto expand, but we, we only have control of, like, 10% of the queue. We really are expecting them to pick up gold pretty aggressively, so we don't necessarily want to use a lot of our construction on it. I mean, we could recruit an army just to do this. Uh... Guys, feel so stupid. You're in the Zanj HQ, so you should be able to go there. Please mobilize your boy. Please, your boy, amongst him, be mobilized. Mobilize your boy. such a, like, I mean, we could play around it, so it's not the most annoying bug. Construction bug is way more annoying, that we only could control 25% of the queue, so when this happens, like, it takes us so long to do anything about it. We only need one, one troopy, because Maverney has no troops, because that's also been bugged for forever. Where the native uprisings do literally nothing because they have zero troops and all it does is just break you. There we go. Oh, you can't mobilize the conscripts if you don't have a unit? Alright, well this will be our shadow realm. Right, let's give him a unique look. Which one should be the shadow realm? Shadow realm army. What changed about the way the GDP was calculated? It used to not calculate uh, the marginal value added and just calculated value added. And so what it used to be is it would uh, calculate a GDP based off of just the output here and not the output minus the input goods. And so the input goods would get counted. This wood, for example, would get counted in the logging camp. It would get counted as an output for GDP. And then because the cost, uh, the overall value of tools, it was not less the cost of the input of wood, the wood would effectively get counted twice. And so the higher tier industrial goods would just like get counted multiple times and you would just have absolutely enormous GDPs, relatively speaking. It should be a demand, it's in diplomatic demands tab. Ah, ah, okay, thank you. Do African Americans have immunity to malaria? I think they have to specifically be in their homeland state, and or, and I don't think African Americans have homeland states in Africa. So I think that the answer is no. All right, hopefully we get compulsory primary school through. But yeah, these guys will finish up bad. So what's your plan on charity stream? I still have to find out which charity that I want to uh, donate to, or I want to like have as the thing. Um, but it's going to be for Ukraine. We're probably going to play as Ukraine and conquer all of Russia, or at least remove Russia from the map. Uh, and then I'm probably going to drag Putin a lot on stream. And some people are going to say it's too political and whatever, and I don't care. It's probably going to be the... Like, I don't care that... <sighs> like, there's, like, there's politics, and then there's, like, uh, being a human being. <laughs> like, and the, like... Uh, yeah. Uh, if I could have one person on Earth drop dead in an instant, it would be it would be Putin. So um, that's what I did last year. And so, like, that's kind of the plan. Which, like, some yeah, some people didn't like it, but I mean, I think that what's going on in Ukraine is like. Uh, horrible and unnecessary. 
And so last time I did a bunch of like little presentations every hour on the hour about Putin. And so I might do something like that. That takes a lot of prep time, though. We'll see. What's the plan, Rio de la Plata? Yeah, I'm not sure if you can even form it, though. And so we, we have to wait for these guys to colonize, which is why we wanted to bankroll Chile, but then we couldn't. Um, not release subject. But we, I think that we have to form Rio de la Plata before we could form the Mega one, and I want to see if we can form the Mega one, because that's going to affect how much infamy we're taking when we go after these guys, or even if we need to go after these guys in this way. Let's try and get them above, like, hostile, but... Uh, we are floating a little bit here, so I think we're going to come in and do a consumption tax on opium. Opium is uh, a tax on the lower rung pops. Maybe we don't like that as much, actually. Porcelain's probably going to be slightly preferable. Now, why aren't you pushing here, my guy? Oh, you are. Okay, it's just taking you forever. That's fair. Just, just taking forever. Any plan to try Terra Invictus soon? Not in the near, near future. Although, maybe maybe on Tuesday. I, I want to stream Variety on Tuesday evenings. And so, and Pal World is not uh, opening for me right now. Um, like, the, the client won't open. And so I, I, I would have to address that. But we're also almost done, like, filling out the decks on Pal World, so... I kind of wanted to maybe do that. Populating the Americas. Ah, that's where it came from. So let's get rid of this and uh, promote mass migration. Now, we already have a mass migration movement here, right? In Cordoba. So let's see where it goes when we do populating the Americas. Santiago. Where is Santiago? It's not up here. Oh, it's right here. Okay. So all the neighboring ones are not owned by us, which is a bit unfortunate. But we'll say welcome to Paraguay. Portuguese mass migration. Nice. They want a defensive pact. It's so stupid that if you're in the customs union with someone, you can't declare war on your subjects if you have a defensive pact. But also the defensive pact is not very, not very useful. What's the construction bug? So uh, currently, uh, the private queue, uh, they are getting 75% control of the construction. And what this is supposed to be, the percentage they're supposed to get, is supposed to be proportional to how much of the construction goods they're paying for. If we take a look here, we see that they're only paying for 68K uh, of the 200K on the construction good cost. So they're only paying for 33%. So they should have 33% and the government should have 67%, which would allow us to do stuff like finish a bunch of government administrations faster. Uh, but instead they have 75% uh, percent. and this is like, uh, this is pretty obnoxious. Um, now your T is going to spell like plutonium. Yeah, I'm going to trip and fall on a bullet. The, the, the truth hurts. Yeah, like, at, at the, yeah, this is not, I, I, it's also not something I've been anything but, like, straightforward about in regards to, like, politics that, like, uh, I, I'm going to warn people at the start of the stream that I'm probably going to drag Putin every hour on the hour, but this is, like, the plan. After Kissinger, it would be like a parade. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Kissinger either. <laughs> can you check Sierra Leone's main culture? I'm pretty sure English is one of them, so you can technically form the UK with them. Not sure, though. Really? I don't even know where Sierra Leone is, to be honest. Alright, I was, I was close. Afro-Caribbean. I just entered the chat. This is nuts. What? What is written? What is nuts in the chat? The chat seems, chat seems kind of normal. I mean, they're chatting kind of fast. You voted for Putin in 2018, by the way. I I think Putin's a bad guy. I don't mean <laughs> this to be offensive 
to you, <laughs> Rooster Cobb. I don't think he's a good guy. And I'm not, yeah. Has anyone figured out what file you need to do to edit to allow buildings and subject nations? Uh, I don't know this. Have you seen Guild of Destiny? I, uh, maybe if I did, I don't, uh, uh, I don't know. Option one Putin or option two Putin, yeah. There was like, uh, <laughs> I forget which election it was, but like, <laughs> in the early voting, Putin had over 100% of the vote. <laughs> Because he, he won so much of the vote, and then he got so many fake votes, too. I mean, Putin is really popular in Russia, so, like... I still think that, um... You know, uh... What's going on in Ukraine is, like, uh, unnecessary. And I don't think the West provoked Putin. I disagree with that narrative. With their defensive alliance that does nothing for going on offense. And they weren't even trying to get Ukraine in. Mainly because, to be fair, the, if if NATO thought that they could get Ukraine in without angering Russia, they might do that. So, like, maybe that's, like, not the fairest comparison, but, like... Um, the, like, the Nord Ost Theater uh, incident and the uh, Beslan School, like hostage crisis, like, t uh, were both of those to me very, like, indicative of, like, a problem. Yeah. I thought you were... I thought you were from the Czech Republic, Ruskov. Is that... Oh, my modern understanding of geography not, might not be that good. I thought the Czech Republic was also independent from Russia. The bug is infuriating. Yeah, it is. The bug doesn't matter if you play with autonomous construction off, but yeah, it doesn't matter at all. But I think the game is a lot less fun and dynamic without it. I 100% agree with this. This is definitely my position. Okay, so we could see... We can reduce autonomy in Persia, and they just accept. So I think we go with this. And now they are look like our color. We'll see who else we can reduce autonomy on. Macron. They will accept as well. Sambas, they will accept. Chile will not accept. Brazil, not going to be in the accepting mood. I think that uh, UK is also kind of likely to side against us if Brazil doesn't accept. So we'll just eco up until we're bigger than Brazil. Okay, what's causing the bug? I don't know. Is it better to play with private queue if we want to build? I noticed I had very few construction on laissez-faire. Yeah, so I think that if you want to play with it on, you probably don't go laissez-faire. Uh, until you have over a thousand construction. I think you go interventionism instead. Something like this. You can form the Caribbean as Sierra Leone. That is an amusing one. Construction bug has taught me to use direct investment pool and it's better when you get used to it. Uh, it is better, but it's way more tedious. So, like, I don't, the, depends. Like, we're tr when I play, I try and play on a relatively high speed, so I make a lot of errors anyways. I'm gonna take a save, go for Congo, make sure there's no psychosis. Researching feminism here. What are we doing after feminism, though? Maybe investment banks into malaria prevention. I mean, we wanted to get power. To be fair, I think we're also out of pops in a lot of places, so uh, rotary valve engine would actually probably be a solid, a good shout. Yeah, we don't have that many peasants. <sighs> so this would actually probably be decent. 
You mean Hitler was popular in Germany? Yeah, but the... I don't know, the, I, have, I have mixed feelings about we got the Shadow Realm army. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, when I say Putin's popular in Russia, I'm not trying to say that... Uh, that means I think he's there's just a chance that he's a good guy. What I'm trying to say is that people can be coming from wildly different perspectives. And the, their perspective is often an indication of their situation. Uh, like, for example, almost everyone tends to be the religion of their parents. And I think that the religion people tend to have tends to be not a consequence of, like, some feature of the religion itself as much as uh, it's the one their parents had. We'll incorporate that. Anything else we want to incorporate? Maybe... Over 100% of the ants, uh, events, uh, votes, and some ca other candidates had some. Yeah, I, I don't think that there's been a, f like, yeah. I don't necessarily want to turn this stream in particular into a Putin dragging. Although, I do hate, uh, yeah, I, I do not like Putin. This guy becomes the leader of the intelligentsia. He's a market liberal. Do we hate that? I think we... What do we have now? We have a reformer. I think we prefer the reformer. Let's say he could say what he wants. Uh, but we can't enact a law now. Because so we did get compulsory primary schools. So let's do this as well. We want to stay on legal guardianship because it makes it a lot easier to go suffrage. And we're, like, researching the law that gives us suffrage. I think we're pretty well set in terms of what we want other than we don't have multiculturalism right in theory we want like regulatory bodies and old age pension but it's not very important to us oh, I forgot we have this cautious dude oh it's so good it's so good we want this guy to be president forever Minus infamy generation is the thing. And extra tech spread is actually kind of nice, too. We're kind of about that. I think that... Were we building up to economies of scale? Yeah, we were. We'll add another five into the queue. But it takes forever to... It takes forever to add unis with this bug, too. And so generally, like, the tech is so lagging compared to, like, a normal game. Because you just can't add the unis as fast as you want to. Since we're not passing the law, we might just want to increase taxes and swap over everything to steal. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, kinda. Let's just go up two notches. Get rid of some of this... At. Although maybe we want a deficit spent into it here. Czech Republic is far away from modern Russia. NATO denied Ukraine uh, since 2008 and they uh, wouldn't have been invaded if they were let in. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about the analysis that they wouldn't have been invaded if they wouldn't have let in. Because um, Putin's been saying like some interesting stuff about Poland. <laughs> recently. Uh, Putin might have just gone for Poland instead. Or something like this. I don't know. He invaded, uh, uh, he invaded Georgia, and he invaded Ukraine twice, and he's, like, pretty much every five years, he's been relatively belligerent towards a neighbor. You're Czech, so you should check it out, <laughs> but I'm not Czech. Czech cat. You're in Czech, so you should check it out, but you're not Czech. Got it. So you're... That makes sense. Okay. In terms of where you are, 
check. Nationality, not check. I love that. That's my favorite pun ever. <laughs> you just ask someone if they've been to uh, Prague, and then when they say no or yes, or when they say no, which is often the case, you should be like, you should check it out. Another one I like is whenever someone says intense, you just say camping is intense, because it is inside of tents. Circuses are also inside of tents. And so you just go, camping is intense. That one goes over people's heads most of the time, though. Which makes it kind of funnier in a, in a personal way. Alexis Ritchie says, I, uh, I watch your main channel, by the way. I'm glad you uh, you watch my main channel. <laughs> it, although, to be fair, I should start calling this my main channel because it's so much bigger. I like it, but I wasn't expecting that. Maybe another ga gaming channel, but nope. Yeah, completely different. And I talk about, like, politics and other stuff there which is why i'm always a little bit like it's not like i don't have an interest or opinion on politics and that type of stuff uh but i try not to talk about it in the game channel because there's a lot of people who just like don't want to hear about that type of thing and i try and be a little bit respectful for that like people are here to see for the most part to see me play but to be fair uh like there's a lot of politics involved in victoria right so like if there was going to be a game where you're going to talk about politics, this one might be it. Our SOL's been climbing up in a nice clip here. Although SOL is, like, not a very good driver of migration for us. Relatively speaking. Because we get so... I, I, like, I hate that standard of living is, like, so weak compared to unused arable land. Like, as a modifier. I've, just, like, given feedback to the devs on this. But I, I think that, like... Uh, standard living and available jobs, I think, should give more of an impact, but they don't. But they don't. Yeah, we're just out of pops everywhere, huh? Oh, that sucks. This is why the big religions encourage, uh, big religions encourage procreation, or why religions that encourage procreation are big. Because they're good at expanding. Alright, you probably said that in response to me talking about how people tend to have the religion of their parents. Yeah. I, I mean, the, being an evangelical religion, like a religion that tries to spread as part of its tenets, is also a pretty big one. Like, people are much less likely to convert to religions that do not do that. And there's a lot of religions that do not do that, but they're not very big. Politics stream and badly in general. Yeah, I think that a lot of... It's it's really hard to be informed about everything politics as well. So, like, a lot of stuff is me saying, like, okay, I've read, like... I think I'm way more informed than the average person. I think we're going to save and go for Congo here. Uh, I think I'm way more informed than the average person. I do not consider myself extremely well informed uh, on like politics stuffs though, in like the abstract, and I think that uh, why don't we do this and uh, like if I read a fifteen-hour book, I think I'm generally going to be more informed than people because people just don't read about stuff that they talk about, which is a little bit wild to me, but. Um, Are we going to need more than that? Oh, they have 13. We will need more than that, I think. Uh, let's just send these guys. Oop, I don't want to raise the conscripts. No. My brain just auto-completed that. But, like, uh, if I read a 15-hour book, that doesn't make me an expert on something. Like, or even remotely close. Uh, and, like, a lot of the people who talk about politics are just talking about what's happening now, and then they actually really don't know a lot about that specific thing, and generally stuff is a lot more nuanced than, like, the superficial takes that people give, and so, uh, what a lot of it is is just, like, more political entertainment than being informative or responding to whatever's the latest thing, rather than, like, actual deep understanding of underlying systems. Hey, Potrack, how's it going? Make him Caesar. Yeah. You also want over 100% of the homes for that guy. Yeah. 
I live in Finland, I've been expecting Russians to evade again for the last 80 years. Where we've been, yeah. Where we have been. Not where I have. That'd be a neat trick, just being alive over 80 years and then, yeah. It's a, it's a tough one to do. Cause you'd have to be 90 for it to be your personal, yeah. But... Do we have any info problems? Jujui. Right. Also, the, like when we're solving info problems, like this takes up two thirds of the things we have control over. You know, Georgia was also denied entry into NATO. Putin wouldn't dare attack NATO. I, I, I think that that's it's possible that he's willing to attack NATO. Talk, uh, talk about Poland is, uh, uh, big, but Russia would get destroyed if it was more than talk. I think there's simultaneously a lot of saber rattling, but then also, uh, my opinion is that Putin wants to restore the Soviet Union's old borders, and that would involve attacking NATO countries. Um, got a question on construction, maybe someone in chat can answer. Is the investment pool... Is the investment pool does anything without private construction queue? Is it just pay for construction? The the investment pool only pays for construction goods. That's all it does. But this is an enormous percentage of your thing. Hell yeah, says Julian. Uh, yeah, people want to tune out of politics here. Yeah, so maybe, maybe we start dropping some of the... <laughs> I generally respond to most comments, and so... But yeah, maybe I should just redirect here and focus more on the game. It's also like, it's difficult to unpack something in a nuanced way while you're playing a video game as well. Like, <laughs> my finest analysis is not gonna be done on a live stream as well, because like, you're concentrating on talking and like, uh, being a stream of consciousness and not being as like, necessarily thoughtful. Like, not stopping and thinking for a while and then like, writing down your thoughts and then like, you're not engaged in a process that leads to like, really, really rigorous thought when you're streaming, so it's like, I think it's pretty easy to misspeak when you're talking about politics or something controversial. Which is like, yeah, another reason to not do it. I think we just, uh, demobilize these armies now. Especially because we could script in. So that's an easy one, good deal -sies. I think we have a lot of infamy, we do. There's always Modern Time mod for Hoey. Yeah, then we could really talk if we were playing Millennium Dawn. <laughs> that would get... Yeah. I don't know. The, I also, like, am not super upset if someone uh, finds out what my politics are, strongly disagrees with me, and then stops watching me. Like, I'm not trying to trick people into watching me. If, if my politics are such that you would not want to watch me if you learned them... What is this? You're uncertain right when you open. Hmm. I wish we could bite off a piece of this, but no side is willing to give us anything. I think we'd be okay taking either side of that. As much as I like hearing about modern politics, you prefer Victorian era politics when watching a stream about Vicky? Yeah. I think a lot of people who also don't want to watch politics are less talkative in chat, and so, like, I try and think about the people who are here, but not talking in chat, because they don't want to be. Okay, so, let's think about, we're about to hit feminism, so we will probably be wanting to roll for an agitator. So let's see what we have. So we can roll for... We are looking to see if we have a positive popularity on either a trade unionist or on a intelligentsia guy. And if we do, then we have to be careful. This guy is super disliked, so it's actually not a problem. This guy is neutral but disliked. And we're doing this because we want to roll uh, someone who will allow us to go humanitarian. That guy's really disliked, but he was intelligentsia. 
Okay, so it looks like we can roll either uh, an Intelligentsia guy or a Trade Unionist guy. Hey, Technocrat, how's it going? Most people can behave, but as soon as politics start, I find you always end up with two or three people insulting just because instead of voicing their opinions respectfully. Yeah, but if someone's... If you guys are insulting to me, generally I won't time you out. Uh, if you're insulting to each other, I'll start timing people out. Which, like, I mean, I like people to be able to say whatever they want, but also, like... <laughs> it's also my chat, so I can do what I want. <laughs> like, it's not a public forum. Okay, so now... Now, 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 we can roll both humanitarians and enlightened royalists. Let's actually decrease taxes one notch, because that'll put us into the next thing. So, I think we're going to start rolling some generals here. So, the Indonesia army. Okay, we actually have some defensive strategists, so we're going to recruit those into our defensive-oriented armies here. And in theory, like, if you provoke a rev with the armed forces right before this starts, that'd actually be a really good way to make sure that you roll a lot more generals of the, 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 the thing that you want. Okay. Let's get... Wow, we're really just rolling only armed forces, guys. That kind of sucks. This is going to talk uh, take a lot of bureaucracy. Okay, so we have a liked feminist. We're just going to leave them. We're just going to leave them there. We wouldn't hate feminism, like, super hard. The, the workforce contribution ratios actually, like, would be somewhat relevant right now, but... Uh, two feminists. Okay. I think eventually we make this into a defensive army. Alright, we get a jingoist and two feminists. So we are bricked somewhat on those. So now let's check these guys. Reformer. So this is an example of a guy we don't want to recruit. Uh, yeah, Paradox slowed down the economy to development, so they delayed lags. Yeah. Cautious. We wouldn't mind him becoming leader eventually. We don't really want our main navy to have extra guys in it, so we'll just recruit a zero stack navy. We would not mind a feminist of those guys, actually, at all. Protectionist, we can't do that, so... We're going to have to exile someone or pull off of this. It looks like. If we just get a full six stack of people we don't want. Three in each. Alright, so we have to recruit him. This is starting to cost us a lot of bureaucracy as well. Market liberal. This guy is neutral, but... They can win a battle and then become positive, but not if they don't have any control of anything, so... They're not going to have control of any navy. Alright, so. Hmm. I mean. This is a lot of rolls. We don't even need to read what they are. Because we know the trade unions and the intelligence yet. Really? Real, real? I kind of don't want to do another. We've spent so much bureaucracy on generals now. We're in a deficit. Alright, maybe we just chill for a little bit. Kinda sucks. We'll catch up on chat. Do you recommend me buy the game? I don't know if it looks appealing to you. Uh, you've followed your video since day one of Victoria 3. I've heard that you have a Discord channel, is that correct? Yes, could someone link the Discord?
Victoria Theory is your favorite political uh, leader, Rosa Luxemburg, a German communist agitator. Yeah. People want more spreadsheets, less politics. <laughs> I personally love how live streams devolve into philosophy and politics, says Brad. I mean, uh, these are things that, like, definitely interest me a whole lot, so, like, uh, assimilation doesn't do anything useful, which it should, but it doesn't. I think we're okay with that. Yeah, we wish we could put support in on either of these sides and, like, have it be accepted so we could actually get something good evening paul how's it going can you show france laws i want to know how to get that cool fl flag yeah we could show laws real quick that'll give us a chance to catch up on chat i think it's the presidential autocracy lester says he watched the technocrats videos they were very informative uh the technocrat is uh are you under it's your YouTube's the same as your username here, right? Yeah, and then your Discord's different. So if you guys want to check him out, you can take a look. He does make Victoria 3 tutorials. It's a generalist form, it is. I thought you were playing the Dutch until now. Wait, why did it look like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're playing Paraguay. The flag is, like, very similar. How do you have such high literacy? We have... I don't know. We just read a lot, dog. We have max level of the institution, though. The max level is somewhat recent. Um, that's not. It. That's the law. We oh, we don't even have max level. Yeah, we're just. Uh, it helps a lot that we don't have very many peasants and we have high SOL, because um, well, SOL doesn't give literacy, but wealth does, and wealth correlates with SOL. Are there any cash problems, crash problems from this patch? I haven't experienced uh, very many crashes, but I've had like one run ending crash where it just kills the run. Do you have an EIC strategy? You should ask on the forum or on my Discord because there are some people who know the EIC backwards and forwards and I don't uh, know it as well as they do. Because the EIC is like one of the more unique uh, like knowledge based countries. Uh, somehow they are not, they did not get made into the Raj, so they are going to be super big caked up. Which, I hate seeing uh, Great Britain conquer a whole bunch internally here, so. Also, congrats on the 13k subscribers. Oh, did I hear, it hit 13k this morning? Thank you very much. Looking for a humanist or enlightened royalist? Yeah, that's what we're doing. We might take another shot at some rolls, actually. Oh, it's just pain, though. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna hire one of these guys and fire them. Probably the mountain combat expert, or we could. So if this guy isn't getting in any fights, we actually don't mind having him. He just has to not get in any fights. Protectionist. All right, so one of these guys has got to get exiled. I think we're gonna exile the jingoist here. We have the positivist event chain too, which I think makes it more likely we get positivist. So we have feminist, feminist. All right, we could take the zero. Mm. Yeah, we're now up to 450 bureaucracy deficit. All right. We'll calm down a little, I guess. We'll incorporate some chill into our play. Building in places I know that has sulfur. We'll just kick those to the front of the queue. But yeah, we'll, we're going to be a lot more government administrations from now. Why generals and admirals don't increase military wages? Yeah, they should cost military wages too. In a sense they do though. Right, because they increase bureaucracy costs. So maybe, maybe that's kind of fine, the way it shakes out. I actually don't use this tab anywhere near as much as I should, I think. Argentina, Ecuador, Tripolitania, Brazil, Chile. Brazil, I think, is not going to accept. 
So maybe we go for Tripolitania here. We're gonna take a save and just annex Tripolitania. They have oil pretty pretty soon here, so we've secured ourselves a nice chunk of oil. I think we're just gonna use our big stack. Somehow our interest there got deactivated. Oh, because we annexed Congo and we don't control all the Congo. That's fair. Um, we do something like that. We'll try and improve relations. Okay, Mummy, we have max relations. I think... Hmm, maybe we're kind of okay with floating. If we float, we get the extra infamy decay. So, maybe we're about that. He's also very active in V3 chat. Uh, reading the chat, or are you talking about me and, like, the Discord or the Reddit? I'm usually trolling on Reddit, though. Rather than actually being useful. Conquer Luristan? these with the National Guard Army, I guess. Actually, where are they from? Hmm. They should be in the Shadow Realm Army, if any. I think we'll just merge them with the National Defense Army, though. Do we win this, even? We might not even win this. I think we can prevent him from taking Luristan. And he's also fighting Egypt right now. And then I think we could land with this army, probably. On Paraguay. Or not on Paraguay, on Tunisia or whatever. So. I'll actually set this guy in delaying tactics here. I don't think he can push us, so I think this will be fine. You normally save and reload if I don't want to get any generals, admirals, I want saves coming for the win. Yeah, we could do this as well. Uh, same run ending as it keeps crashing at the exact same sp uh, spot. That run's bricked, I think. Yes, you can be tough uh, because you can recruit up your armies very easily because of discrimination. Yeah, that's the, the challenging thing about EIC is the discrimination, but like you can release all your subjects and go Bengal. Like, really early. Hey, GG says, hold my fanny pack, what a name. I recently found your videos on Vic3 and found them super helpful for your games. Uh, so thanks for putting them out there. You're very welcome. I don't even know if we win this, man. Hopefully some of our generals die in battle. Because we have too many. I know we are. All, we're also running a negative malice. If we're not, then... Yeah, minus 2% bureaucracy, minus 5% bureaucracy, minus, yeah. Hmm. You really don't want banned slavery on the Ottomans? We can live by Iraq, too.
We might actually just encounter a ton of trouble because they're fighting Egypt right right now, so I don't really know how I feel about this siding. Get a native uprighting in Sand. Oh, it's not ours, it's theirs. Oh, and they're fighting France too? Yeah, I don't... I don't, I don't think they have the right war selection strategy, to be honest. God, we really need bureaucracy. It's really bad to run tax waste, because this annihilates money, it just deletes it, so... You really don't want to... You want to avoid money-deleting modifiers if you can. Yo, man, says Loskies. Hey, how's it going? How are you? I'm doing well. How about you? Positivist sounds so pleasant, but it's so bad. It's not that that bad if you want to go technocracy it's good you're offering to sway for what in exchange for paraguay and gabon i don't think so i think we want to save that for like a kind of big war kind of don't like this event overall I think we won't ban slavery, we'll keep that on them so that we can maybe sway something in the future. In theory, we should have put an interest in the Balkans and also released Bulgaria, but I think I like the slightly neater borders that we're going to get from this. What do you want now? Owing them an obligation. The real problem with owing them an obligation is we cannot declare war on someone with whom we have an obligation, and this is like pretty asinine. Uh, and since, uh, we can't declare war on any of our subjects if we have an obligation with them. Otherwise, we would go for this. You played EIC, I think the only way is to manually annex all your subjects. No, you can, uh, you can release. If you release the subjects, they don't get a bunch of territory. Uh, but I don't know the exact way to, like, proc the event for forming Bengal, but you can just release all your subjects. You usually miss the morning streams? Hey, Matt. I'm happy to make it today. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, we do this every Saturday, 7.30 PST. The EIAC's uh, journal entry for annexing subjects is a bit of a trap. I agree, because it gives, for most of your subjects, it costs more infamy uh, than just annexing them would. Uh, I think they're... It gives 20 infamy per annex now? I thought it was 10, but yeah, 20 is just not, uh, yeah. That Egypt Ottomans front looks, uh, so 1840. Yeah. The truth hurts. The Ottomans are gonna get clapped here, I think. I mean, we're on all defend, but they're just gonna bleed out to this other side here, right? And look who's undefended, Tripolitania, so. We should be able to, you know, dice that up pretty quick. Looks like one of our malices went away. Oh no, wait, we finished our buildings. I think we're gonna need to add some more to BH. Something like that, I don't know. Oh, it does, only controlling 25% of Q hurts so much when you run out of bureaucracy, because it like feels like you just freeze your construction queue for forever. What pop consolidation setting do we play on? Aggressive. Because we are looking to play deeper, and we like the performance boost. I think it's pretty marginal. Name a country for an edit. Prussian Republic map maker. Oh, I got one for you. Everyone fears this. I would like a merging of Texas and California into a single, into a single state and have that be a nation. You can call it Texafornia or Calatexas. Calexis. 
I've got one for you. If someone makes a Texafornia mod, I will play it. Pretty sure that'll also just be like us having ports on here and here, or I'm not sure exactly how it works. If we could have ports on both sides or if we have to pick which coast we have a port on. <laughs> not sure if we get to turn it into Panama. If they have an 80 stack on that front. Interesting. Except for the, they often lie where they are. Which I really hate, it's really obnoxious, but these guys can be somewhere other than what where they visually appear to be. Alright, our, our navy's coming in for this landing. Got all this just to annex Triple Atania. Are we on? Everywhere. Why did we not turn this on? Seems very strange. Oh, I understand now. We really didn't have that much rubber. do that. Yeah, so they're just meat grindering themselves here. Now we get in here, hopefully. Wow, we really can't handle this navy while we're waiting for our, oh wait, we were waiting for our navy to come. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, that tracks. And then we'll try and occupy up here. I think we won't start in Dobruja because Dobruja is actually in a different strategic region. Ottomans are actually just so miserable to defend against landings because they, they actually occupy four strategic regions. Five if you actually get any of Arabia. And so actually do you start with, no you don't start with Aleppo. Uh, because you have this one little part in Dobruja, this one part in the Caucasus here, and then Anatolia and Balkans obviously. And so like it looks like you should just only have to defend two strategic regions but you have to defend four. If you're playing against, like, a human. The Oil Baron Republic. Does Texafornia mod need events and journal entries? Yes. No, it doesn't need them. I don't even know what they would be. I'm joking. I would love journal entries. Especially if people are moving from <laughs> California to Texas journal entries, but it's all the same state, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> 100% flavor cheese. I think they don't have anyone defending against landings here because they've just committed everything to the fronts, which makes sense because how else are you going to beat this? But I think we just get in here. Yeah, we do. Which is super nice. I think we'll send this guy to this front. It'll weaken our defense here a little bit, but I think we're just winning these... Are we? Or uh, Persia's trying to push, so... Shout out to him. But look at this, we just get to occupy all this. Man, we have diced up the Ottoman Empire so many times with, like, landings, winning wars that we shouldn't have. This is such a, like, common theme. Like, over the last, like, several runs I've played, where, like, they're actually stronger than us. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Smooth war is so good. Must have acquired some territory somewhere. Yeah, that was it. Definitely want all of those on automatic irrigation. See if we could swap more. No, not really. Let's 
55 stack can't get to the fronts before the fronts get reset. It's a beautiful thing. And if he gets here, we just leave. Clinic. And Congo succession. I think that's going to be the Congo. It's going to be nice, though, because we actually have a front here, so we can do something about it. Okay, so he catches us with our hand in the cookie jar. Oh no, we've already started a battle. He gets there right as the battle starts. We're gonna put everyone on defend front, because we don't want them actually pushing in. Okay. He's gonna leave? What's this about? Space wizardry? Are you leaving just to come back when we put on offense? Where are you going, my guy? Okay, well, if you're leaving, leaving. We'll just switch back to rapid advance everywhere. Since you're not here no more. Did they abandon this front? Is that what's going on? I mean, we have an advantage here. And it looks like they're pushing there. Do we have offense plus... We have offense plus mountain. But we'll just switch to offense here on this guy. Just look to press from both sides. There should be a 50 state mod for the US. I'm a fan of actually merging some of the states in the US. I propose this is one of my proposals in the the feedback is I think all of this should get merged into a single state. All this should be New England. It's, like, especially obnoxious with Mappy, because, like, these states are super miserable to build in for Mappy reasons, and they would be so good. And, like, th this was also, like, a place where a lot of construction happened, and just merging them all would fix the problem. I've also advocated for, with less enthusiasm, merging Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wyoming into a state titled et al., but people are less enthusiastic about that one. He goes four removals, does have uh, all the U.S. states as the tags and a bunch more. Interesting. Where do you want the capital? It's a single state. What do you mean? It's in Texafornia. <laughs> it's in Los Angeles. Yeah, exactly. Where else would the, the, the capital of Texafornia be? But Los Angeles? Have you thought of playing Sakoto with some extra text? I've not considered this. Not that I wouldn't do it, it's just I haven't considered it. What What's the main idea though? Isn't the main idea of playing Sakoto playing with really terrible text? You kind of like void the reason to play Sakoto. I mean, I suppose a Sakoto with modern text would be somewhat interesting. Sick man for a reason, yep. Yeah. It's annoying playing the USA for that reason at times. Yeah, and like, this should have been a reason, a place where a lot of construction happened, but it's, it's just uber miserable. I also think that like, DC should be merged, like, uh, it's, DC is like, it's so miserable that you have the White House, which has a really nice bonus, and you re can't make use of it because your population's always like five. And so DC should be merged with Maryland as well. These were, more seriously, these are the two suggestions I made, was New England and the merging of DC and Maryland. Not actually the at all state, although I wouldn't have a problem with the at all state. All right, so no one's opposing us here. So, might as well push the front. Do that. I feel like they should have be closer to giving up here, but they're not. You know, before all those states are just called New England. Yeah, that's the way it should be. I don't know. It's I don't know. There's like. I think it should definitely be that way. One of these guys has offensive planner, we're gonna set him to push. 
we're starting to pull a lot of guys off this front, but I guess it's not mattering because they're really having to commit to this France thing. I don't know why they don't just give it up, man. This seems so bad for them. This is like definitely the, there's, I think almost all the changes I would really aggressively push for are actually now related to the way peace uh, wars start and are resolved. It just became more complicated making uh, Hoos Angeles. Yeah, make Hoos Angeles, make it located like right here. This is where Hoos Angeles is. <laughs> annex Peru. Uh, I, we're gonna see what the event chain looks like before we annex them. Or we're gonna see, after we form Rio de la Plata, if we can form the Mega Nation, um, because if we can form the Mega Nation, we actually don't want to annex them. We just want to, like, subjugate and reduce autonomy to Dominion level. Like, Ottomans should be... Yeah, the way people capitulate is, like, a little bit strange. I guess we need more government administrations, man. I think we even have, like, the ideal law set, too. Are we already on? Apparently not passing any laws. We can see if we've gotten any generals that have died though. I don't think we have. Okay, we got one slot cleared up. Where are you guys from? You're just stragglers from Africa, I think. Please, our kingdom. Our kingdom for what we want. They're not popular. Bro. Yeah, we could in theory like save load in order to like really not have to spend this much juice to do those rolls, but Canadian unification. Canadification. I'm down with it. Not sure if North Germany is a worthwhile one. Looks like we're gonna full occupy them though. Can you guys give up yet, or what? All right, let's just do this. I don't think we can incorporate it. We're having bureaucracy problems as it is. I'm just checking for shortages. Okay, I think we're okay. I think these guys must be North African, right? necessarily going to use them, but... Oh, we do have this play brewing. Which means we want to demobilize most of these boyos. I think the Africa army, we have traveling to that front. So everyone who's not the Africa army, we will just demobilize. Cold War era mod also merges most of the US states into just a dozen or so. Yeah. I, the, I think, like, they got hung up on the, like, 50, the 100 states achievement, and then they wanted there to be 50 states, or, like, this type of thing. They were really ahead of time with D.C. as a state, just saying, yeah. Well, I think, I'm not even sure D.C. should be a state. Or, like, uh, Puerto Rico, I think, should be a state over D.C. Where's Puerto Rico on the map? Right here, right? 
uh, like, Puerto Rico also has more population than North and South Dakota combined. Uh, so, personally, I think they should just actually, like, IRL, merge North and South Dakota, because these are, of all the states, these are the two states that are contiguous with the least population. They should merge those two and make uh, Puerto Rico a state if you absolutely positively need to have exactly 50 states, or they should just make Puerto Rico a state. This is, of course, politically, like, obviously, this is just, like, that's never going to happen because, politically speaking, uh, people know what the demographics of North and South Dakota look like and what uh, Puerto Rico look like, and it's the case of Puerto Rico leans Democrat, and North and South Dakota are Republican, and so that would never, ever get, like, ratified. Massachusetts has so much potential, but not enough pop to exploit it. You would if there was more arable land there, which there would be if it was just one state. It's hard to get the arable land modifier. Yeah. On top of merging states, you really think Haiti and Dominican games should be called merging one state called Hispanolia? Interesting. Somewhat ahead of time with West Virginia. Yeah, this is another one. I would not mind the Virginias being merged in game. But I think during the time period it formed though, right? So just at the start it doesn't make sense, but like later on it does make sense. Extreme enemy occupation should give like 50 war exhaustion rather than 10. I think that what it should be is that like, uh... If you're full occupied, you should just auto capitulate. I mean, like, the biggest thing is I think you should just be able to declare multiple wars at once. Wait, did we get occupied here? Or are they occupied? They're occupied. Got it. Perfect. Do we have anything the Netherlands would want? Probably not. We need to be at peace to try and trade states with them anyways. Yeah, you can't have countries that each own part of their state. Hey, Car Kaiser Wellington. Yippee for the Senate system. Yeah. The Electoral College is like... I'm not a huge fan of it. If I was making a country from the start, that's not the way I would go. But also, that's what everyone agreed to. So I think that's what should be done. It's kind of a weird spot to be in, but that was the agreement. I j yeah, I just don't think it's good, but... We're just gonna swap everything onto that, but just exempt everything that's not popular. I think it's most efficient on furniture plantations, or furniture manufacturers, if I recall correctly. We're just gonna, gonna exempt everyone who doesn't, who says it's not pop, or uh, profitable. Except in the arms industries, we're just gonna swap it, because those are just got obscene margins. Something like this. Now let's do a little bit of a check for our transportation. And if it's really cheap anywhere, we will look to turn on PMs. Okay, so we see it's cheap in these two states, and that state's not ours, so Jujuy. Transport's really cheap, so we'll swap it up. In all the places, and I can see why now, because it's basically just a railroad. And then it's also cheap here. Looks like we don't have too many places where we can swap up the PM, to be fair. We'll kick this on auto expand. So maybe we just have to tolerate that not being super profitable. North and South Dakota were split in the first place in order to maintain the balance of senators between the parties. Well, yeah, that's silly. That sounds like building uh, building the system around the actualities rather than building the system around a theoretical, like, correct situation. Yeah, the North and South Dakota, the... the all the more reason to merge them. But like, yeah. <laughs> it's it's not gonna happen for obvious reasons, right? Because it's just like, uh, you would never get a re Republican House or Senate to sign off on that. 
Do we just go ahead of time? I think we go investment banks here. I mean, we were planning on maybe doing electricity, right? We have to do electricity this episode, too, because of what I made the title. We'll, we'll do electricity after, and then we'll do malaria prevention. Something like this. I think that's fine. The homelands of both states are very different. Haiti speaks French and DR speaks Spanish. It would just be make sense for them to be in one homeland, considering the cultural thing. Interesting. Multiple wars at once would be huge. Yeah, I really wish this was the case, that you could do multiple wars at once. It's actually a very frustrating thing, I think, that you can't. We're at 54 million. The real problem is the pops, though, for us. Age of Cadillos. Oh, apparently if you exile, uh, someone told me, oh, what's this? Oh, we're just so handsome and good at the game. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Oh, 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 we're just so good at the game. Look at this skill game, right? Am I right? Yeah, let's see. Here we are re-rolling generals uh, and all that stuff, and we just have it. Skill game, or are we just handsome? This is the question. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Like, just roll the thing. Okay, but I'm so ready for the mass migrations from the Han Pops. Oh, we's about to pops off. We's about to pops off. Hacks, basically. Streamer luck. You love to see it. Generalist, how do you do XYZ? Well, you're just super handsome and then you get it. We'll add a little bit more bureaucracy. We've had a bureaucracy malice for so, or tax waste for so long now. I guess the Congolese uprising is never surrendering. We're gonna colonize all this as well. So we don't forget. I'm not sure how many PMs we have to reset here, and by not sure how many, it's exactly zero we have to reset here. Um, so I guess now we take a look. To reduce autonomy in Sulawesi, I think we'll do that. Lungan, yep. Chile, oh, Chile will accept now. We'll do that then. And Brazil will not accept. And I'm a little bit leery. I mean, we could just do the little check thing where we save and then load if someone decides, but I think we'll just chill out. I think we could just chill for a little bit here. I think, well, mm, we might just want to subjugate them. Let's just chill on the infamy. You hate how leaders determine ideology? Politics being so luck-based is so annoying. Or luck-based? Don't you mean how handsome you are? Don't you mean that? Might want to turn up the AC. It's going to get hot. Yeah, we got the fan on. I guess we could open the window. Unleash the loud cars. Yeah, let's do that. Everyone loves the loud cars. But, like... You can do it pretty consistently if you're willing to roll a bunch of generals, which uh, is going to be, like, better if you have a much bigger country. 
which doesn't make any sense that humanitarian's easier to get with a bigger country, but four speed Y so I can keep up with the chat without tearing my hair out. Oh, we just get grassroots supports for the law in our first event. You found a assault rifle schematic in Pal World 10 levels early. It was pretty epic. How do you get the ammo, though? You just have to find all the ammo, right? Have you seen the new economic and financial Victoria 3 mod that came out? And have you considered trying it out? It's on my, like, I have a list of things to check out. It's on my list. We'll take a look at it, though. We get North German mass migration. We're about to be getting a ton of those because we're so handsome and good at the game. We just get the multiculturalism. <laughs> what a guy. And we still have this guy too. This guy is 70. <laughs> Probably reason to... Actually, maybe this is a reason to go for Brazil right now. I think we... How close are we to friendly or whatever? Oh, we would have to bankroll to get there. That's an expensive bankroll. Hey, the cars is here. I think we'll just take a save and go after Bolivia. Because I just... Our, our cautious guy is going to die at some point, unfortunately. But this minus 20 infamy cost, uh, I think we kind of want to the pedal to the metal and make use of it. And we're doing that in case, like, the UK or someone develops psychosis. Return Jujui, my affair. brother you thought the future was the children the future is the oil did you try to play a Central America we have tried it it's really rough there's a dude in Southwest that sells ammo it's expensive but I have nothing else to buy with your gold okay bro you can buy ingredients for cakes and make more cakes See, this is exactly what I was talking about. Bro, why does this make sense? I'm so excited for 1.6 introducing, like, uh, a thing where they will give a weighting as to, like, why this is prob probable or whatever. Uh, they're, they're citing because they want Jambi. The leader of our customs union. By the way, we are like a third of the economy of this customs union, right? So this will just, or not even a third, because it's both Great Britain and EIC, but, bro. Like, skill game, right? I don't know, man. I'm so tired of diplomatic plays, like, making no sense. But, like, if we take a look, completely opaque. There's no, there's no, wow, probably siding against you type thing. It's just undecided. War is completely uncertain. Hmm. Oh, I kind of like going for the Seek Empire here anyways, in kind of a long-term type of way, so let's just do this. Let's just do that. It's unlikely that we get sided against there. Age of Cadillos. Hey, now, now they don't want Jambi, now they want to help us out. It's all, well, this actually makes sense because it's unrecognized versus not unrecognized, but like... 
And I understand. That, I think, is, like, a fine mechanic, that they're way more aggressive joining against you uh, if you're going after a recognized country versus unrecognized or whatever. Or the other way around. And, like, we can't just... The, the, the thing that's, like, super obnoxious is we can't just give them Jambi to switch to the other side, right? We can't just, like, give them exactly what they got swayed for and just be like, you know what, you're right. And when you're right, you're right. And you, you're always right. No, instead we just get mummy with psychosis. Maybe this is the truly the best representation, though. Maybe this is realism at its finest. Oil's the future. Alright, so we have solved the bureaucracy problem for now. But it's about to get hairy because we're about to get a bunch more pops. Is their money not green? Such discrimination is not possible, yeah. Ooh, it looks like we got some redacted messages. I agree with both. Whatever they were. Did Central America get balkanized? They did not. This is the, like, one time I've not seen them get balkanized. Seek sides with Afghanistan. Interesting. That's kind of a bit annoying. But also, we wanted to subjugate the Sikh Empire anyways, but I don't think we have the infamy for this. Maybe we just go over, bro. We could just take a second save here. Because when we generate infamy and we go over 25, it's going to change people's attitudes towards us. Well, we have the cautious guy now. Oh, we don't even... We might not even win this war, though. With the Sikh Empire. I just realized. Mm. Shoot. We might not win this. They have to be on some bad PMs, but Seek Empire has good PMs. Line. Line and cannons, probably. Ugh. And there's not a good way to outmaneuver them here. Alright, I think we're gonna try and fight it, but I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. The Seeks tech, yeah, they're they're online. We don't know what the, the their other stuff is though. We had some progress towards the tech we would rather not have. You know what though? So here's the thing: we would. We would be so down with protectorating the Sikh Empire and then pulling in the UK, but if, then if they back down, then it's trash, right? Then we just accrue a bunch of infamy for nothing. I kind of don't like safe scumming over that, though. I think the correct thing to do is to just accrue the amount of infamy you want, and we wouldn't mind transferring something in exchange for getting a Sikh Empire.
And there's a lot of stuff we don't really care about that we actually could transfer, like, in the Mac land. We're not even... Well, we probably win this, but... The thing is, is I'm worried that if we sway the UK, then they, like, 100% back down. And if they 100% back down, then we just get a bunch of infamy for nothing. I mean, I suppose... It's frustrating. I really hate the... I really hate the diplomatic play system where we're accruing the infamy now. And if they back down, we still have to eat some of the infamy. When, like, you should enforce... It should be on enforcement that you enforce the war goals. And, like... And we kind of have to decide right now because it takes, uh, the UK has to think if it's getting swayed. I really am not a fan of, well, maybe it's worth the risk of eating five infamy. The Mac land's pretty useless and we just have two little pips on it. Oh, we don't even have enough. Alright, well, whatever. I guess we're gonna fight it solo. We don't have enough maneuvers. Right? Yeah. Alright. We're gonna fight this kind of sketchy war solo then. Conscripting literally every guy we can, but we're not using edicts, so we could scrape the barrel a little bit more. But that's our pushing army. I mean, we could even merge this with these guys temporarily, to be honest. That just feels bad. I mean, maybe that's what we have to do, though. Okay, let's just do this temporarily. Gonna make one huge stack. You can't back down now, do it. Alright, we're doing it, we're in. Just feels very, it feels bad here. See, because the one thing about this play specifically or the Sikh Empire fighting them, there's no there's no coastal or weird outmaneuvering you can do. It's literally just you throw your front into their front, and if you win, you win, and if you lose, you lose. And it's just this. But these guys are just, they're staying in the HQ. They're not actually helping out. They're defending against naval invasions, targeting the Persia HQ. That makes sense. Okay, well, if they're doing this, then we just roll over them. Another problem with going after the Sikh Empire is they don't have any war goals on us. And so, um, they can enforce us below zero just by waiting it out. I think, th I think that this was a mistake. I think, the r I just wanted to do it because this guy's still in power, right? And he is cautious and we generate less infamy. And this will be really good. Regarding your rum duck, if you started as Turkish Sunni Anatolian state, you should be able to literally have red rum. Red room? Oh, we'd be able to form room? I didn't realize room was a formable. You can't reach seek if you capture Afghan first. Oh my god, you're right. You're so right. Fuck. I'm just gonna reload. It's not, it's not gonna be possible to enforce. We're gonna lose the... We're gonna lose the front. God, that's so stupid, there's no military access. Unless we occupy them so fast that we can also occupy them. I mean, we have a load at the start of this play, right? Or we have a save, I think, at the start of this play. 
I think that was 81. Yeah. So we could just try it, but you're right. I think I'm going to make a list of things I want changed in the game. And military access is going to be one of them. Like, because this is like... Let's, let's get out the piece of paper. We're going to start making a list here. Because, like, I feel like... I get to make a little bit of an input. Because I get to talk with the devs a little bit more. Because, like, of reasons. So, changes... And, like, sometimes it just, like, often we play around these issues so they don't, like, look as much of, like, as much of issues uh, when we're playing. But, like, the fact that we can't get military access after occupying the subject, like, after occupying this guy in the war, it's good. Like, that's, like, I think that's a significant realism, like, thing. But, yeah, like, the thing to do would have been not to put the war goal in on the Sikh Empire as a result. Try it anyways, that's what we're gonna do, but... As a diplomat maneuver, at least it makes sense, though, the Sikh Empire has an interest in Afghan independence. Yeah, I 100% I have no problem with the Sikh Empire joining, which is why, like, I, even though it, like, it makes the war look a lot worse, if they actually sent guys to the front, which they're not, so that part's stupid, uh, but, like, I, 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 I would feel very bad about reloading there, because I don't think this is psychosis. I think this is just kind of a normal thing. And I also think that, like, well... To be fair, when GPs, like, thumb your pie, it's, like, really annoying. Like, I, I really wish you could identify if a GP was going to do something, but you can't. Do we want another guy advancing? We probably do. Alright. Cautious advance, cool. We'll do that one. He'll advance, but just a little bit slower. But I think that we're gonna enforce before we take a state. I think if we even have a state, we can push from that state. So I think we just have to take uh, Pashtunistan. But we're probably gonna be reloading here. Mill access of subjects, mill access uh, of rebels in a country you're at war with, mill access of front access with secessionists in a country you're at war with, yeah. Because you would just fight through the secession if you wanted to. Like, the fact that you can't is... Uh, there's a lot of things that are kind of asinine. This is uh, this is very good for us that their capital is here. That it's going to be the last thing we occupy here. I think that we are just going to take... Well, multiculturalism already has a really high chance. Do we already have powerful intelligentsia? We do, so we don't need to get them above 20%. Um, do we want the prestige even... I think we would be a GP without it. Yeah, we'll just take the enactment chance here. But very nice that... Well, we still want to occupy them quickly, because we are also fighting against our own war support. The war support system and the decay below zero mechanics is also really stupid. Let's write that down, too. Decay below zero mechanic. The fact that you can just, uh, prevent them from, like, you can just be getting wrecked, but if they don't have the war goal, they can't enforce on you, and at the same time, like, the reverse, like, is also really silly. Do you risk your armies getting stuck in the Sikh Empire? Oh, they might get Shadow Realmed. Yeah, we could disband the armies, though. But you are correct, they might get Shadow Realmed here. We'll see how that shakes out. All right, looks like we're on okay shape on the push. But yeah, we're just gonna enforce them out and then lose this front. Bro, this is so stupid. Before a single battle can finish here. This is so dumb. And I'm just gonna break our front, right? Oh, it just Shadow Realms all of our guys, actually. Oh, no, wait. No, no, no. We get stationed in Arabia. <sighs> oh. 
Okay, so this is when we started the, the declare, but then, okay. So we're not gonna put anything in on them. We'll just do this. Oop. We got a redacted message, I agree emphatically. Lost a war against Francis Ching as a boarding separatist. Took the only state I had listed as my war goal. Yeah, exactly. It removed your war goal so you had no war goal at all. Did that cost you to lose the war goal? Lose the war though? In theory, that's like good for you for winning the war. You just get nothing when you win it. Yeah, we also, since we know that they're just going to leave all their guys at the Persia HQ, uh, at the fronts, they're just leaving their guys at home, we're just going to push in Afghanistan with a much smaller force. Or we're not going to, like, go out of our way to scrape the bottom of the barrel here, which, oop, which we would need to do if we were fighting the full brunt of, uh, you know, the things... Because Sikh Empire is spooky. They, like, they start out with... Like, at the game start, they're probably harder to fight than Ching. And you can't do any, like, uh, landing shenanigans on them. Is like, a really big one. And then... Yeah. So, it's just going to be going after Afghanistan, reducing their autonomy and Sikh Empire later. I had a question on one it asked for ages. Go ahead. You'll try to make it understandable. Uh, I'm French after all. Ah, je suis un chat. I speak the language of your people. Except I really don't. Don't ask it in French. I won't understand it if you ask it in French. You could instantly peace, but economy and rage made me quit the run. It was costly to fight France. Yeah, like, I'm 100% with you. Like, this is just obnoxious, and it cost us, like, infamy. And it's like, it just, it also shouldn't be a th like, yeah, it, it, it doesn't, it's not a thing that's frustrating and makes sense from a realism perspective. Like, the UK siding against us makes somewhat sense from a realism perspective in just the most psychotic ways, but like, what it should be is, like, it should be a little bit more transparent. We should be able to go and ask them, hey, would you clap our cheeks if we try and do this? And they say, yes, of course, don't do that. And then we say, okay, I won't do that. And then, like, also... We can't give them anything once they've been swayed against us, because it instantly changes their attitude from genial to whatever, and then they're categorically unwilling to accept it. So, like, when they side against us and they want Jambi, we can't just give them Jambi. It would be interesting if they made starting scenarios in different years. A little bit, but I don't think they should. Unless they're moving back the start date. The reason being is that, uh, for... EU4, almost everyone plays the initial start date. They've publicly come out and said that they're not going to make start date, like, different start dates as a consequence. What is this? Conquer Navarra. What is this? And ban slavery everywhere against Austria. We kind of actually don't want Austria to just take Navarra, but I'm pretty sure Austria... How many votes do you have, my guy? You really think you can do that with just those amount of votes? I mean, Spain might back down, but Spain's got... Austria should never be able to enforce on Spain there, but we'll see. They also might just back down and give up Navarra. Bro, I hope they don't. We could side with them and get a state. Transfer Argentina and Patagonia. I think we need them to have that so they can colonize more, so we're not going to do that. And I think they win that war without our help, so we're not going to side in. Mexico spies with Spain? Hell yeah, brother. So now they're unlikely to back down. Oh! Scandinavia abandoned them, though, after being called as an ally. The truth hurts. Does addicted pops matter when um, when conquering Beijing is France and Russia? If yes, how? I think they uh, consume more opium. Can they become unaddicted if China manages the opium war event? 
I am not 100% sure on this. I think that you can have addicted pops uh, as a result of them, the opium thing. You have 7k hours on EU4 with 10 years-ish. Never started uh, in other than 44 except with a mod. I am in the same boat. Not with 7k hours. I have much less than 7k, but... Big back real Napoleon. We don't want Napoleon at home for a start date. Uh, I would love the start date to be the end date of EU4. Whose market are you joined in? Or are you in the British? Sun never sets on the British market. We would instantly join Russia if possible. That's actually why we were improving relations for most of the thing. We were trying to eventually get in Russia, but... I don't think this is going to be possible. We're kind of getting close to the point where we want to be our own market, though, because we're enacting multiculturalism right now. But the, the British pops are too sweet for us to, to give up, and they were the ones we could join, so... I guess we're just gonna get this. Russia sides with Spain, bro. We would love to be on the side now with Spain to reset Russia's attitude towards us, but we cannot because Russia joined last second. So did two Sicilies. But now this war almost all, yeah, is basically guaranteed to pop off. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Spain's getting enforced on here. What a wild play! I haven't seen like this type of thing in a while. I don't know if I've ever seen like this type of play here. Austria just randomly conquering, going for conquered Navarra. I don't really necessarily hate it, but. Why Russia over UK? Russia has more pops to siphon off and lower average SOL, uh, which makes siphoning off pops easier. It feels like the start date should always be 1824 with how many techs are just always researched by everyone. I think 1821 would be the Napoleon death start. I don't know, they wanted to start with Victoria assuming the crown, right, because she assumes the throne in 36. It's the age of Victoria. We're about to finish occupying this boy. -o. It's almost like we already did it. We have a new, we have a chance to do a different choice on the same event. Locked in. Maybe we actually want the prestige. I think we're just gonna choose the enactment chance because we're still in sponsorship phase. If we were in a later phase, I think we would choose something else. But I think this will, on average, probably save us at least one tick, which we're kind of about. That'll be more pops for us. Wow, we're about we're we're getting close to clearing the queue, guys. We're finally gonna hit our EOS university that we've been trying to build for like forever. But it's not Queen Isabella. Is it? Is it not Queen Isabella on the jacket? It is Queen Isabella on the jacket, or this is my understanding, which I think is really is silly. A and everyone in their thumbnails, including me. Uh, th <laughs> I've, done, I've definitely done a thumbnail thinking that uh, Victoria was, or Isabella was Victoria, using Isabella to represent Victoria, so. Yeah. And then. We will accept White Peace. Thank you. Fifty-fifty. I mean, we could just flip a coin. One of the reasons I also don't want to flip a coin here is, like, if the UK joins against us, which I think they're fairly likely to, we would reload, and so it's kind of like getting a free coin flip, right? And I don't want to get a free coin flip here. We could take on California's debt in exchange for an obligation. 
yeah, Ecuador is the one we kept trying to annex, and we would get the UK siding against us every time, so... Australia? Formations cannot reach HQ. No. Wait, no. They can't reach front. Okay, they're traveling to La Plata. Got it, got it, got it. We're good. We Gucci, fam. On God. No cap. Can you just let us annex you? Maybe we will just take the coin flip here. But the thing is, we don't want the coin flip if the UK side's against us and we don't want a free coin flip. Is there a way to, like, do this? Hmm. So we're more than willing to fight Brazil. We just don't want to fight the UK. And we don't have a way of being, like, mummy. Will you side against us? Because it's just enemy side and then undecided and completely opaque. But this is the next logical step here for us. Like, 100%. Other than maybe just chill for a bit? I don't know. Because this percentage is also going up. Uh, it's not going up because we have positive relations. It's going up because our power level relative to them is going up. We're okay with that. Can you go back to my question on top, please, on what to do with China? I think it's probably boring to answer. Okay, let's take a look. Does addictive pops matter when conquering Beijing as France or Russia? If yes, how? It matters because they will consume more of the thing they're addicted to, except opium addiction is actually good, so you don't care. Uh, can they become unaddicted if China manages the opium war event? I don't know the answer to the second question. If they can, if you can affect their addiction by China winning the opium war. But you'd rather they be addicted to opium anyways, I think. Hello, uh, Latio. Because the, the opium has a more efficient PM, so you'd rather yourself produce a larger share of opium, and so opium addiction is useful. And so... It matters, but in a good way. And you would not want to get rid of, rid of it if you could. I mean, we could bankroll Brazil. It's kind of an expensive bankroll, though. Opium addiction is good. Victorious three moment, basically. Slavery is bad because you can't tax them. Very Victoria three. To be fair, you wouldn't want to act. You would actually prefer to not tax slaves if you could, but they also like get just a very narrow basket of goods, and you'd rather they get a bigger basket of goods for a variety of reasons. Man, we really want to reduce their autonomy while this guy's still alive. This guy's an absolute chad, just staying alive for like a, probably like half the run now. You asked another one, but I answered it, so all good. What to do with China? Yeah, okay. Innovative has been nice too. I think this is also another one of the better ones. I mean, maybe we save and we just coin flip. I kinda hate it, cause like, the, the thing the thing that we would want to reload for is UK joining against us and we just effectively get a free coin flip because it could be the case that UK joins against us and then Brazil just backs down and then we get it for free when we don't deserve it. We're going to exempt here and hopefully we don't cause too much problems with stuff. And we're going to change just, because we're running out of pops, and this does increase pop demand by, like, 50, which can be, like, what is, in percent, terms of percentages, what is that, like, 
16% more pops demanded. We're gonna only swap it on uh, all of the uh, plantation stuff. And I think this is the only swap we're gonna make on these. The, it does produce positive effects in other ways, and if we were running out of peasants, or sorry, if we had a ton of peasants, I think we would want to put publicly traded on everything, but yeah, let's actually cancel. Let's not do that there. But after after taking a closer look at like efficiency per pop, I'm starting to develop a little bit of different opinions on capitalist, uh, on swapping to uh, public uh, things. I also think vineyards should be down with the other ones. It's kind of annoying. The way vineyards are located. And then we can't switch this until we, unless we swapped over to publicly traded. Which I think we do, but can't switch it yet. It's bad for SOL if you can't supply their demand. Well, I mean, it's just bad for SOL because they will, uh, they just consume the singular basket of goods. And if they're, uh, if they are in excess, they don't receive more goods. So like lower strata pops, if they're in excess, they will jump up their, uh, their wealth level. And then with the increased wealth level, they will consume more goods. But slaves, like, they have a cap. And so it's capped. Like, the moment you go to Fascist USA with Bonaparte as the Emperor and feel good, only Vicky does that. Yes, Fascist USA with Bonaparte as the Emperor. I don't even know what the positive apoc does, to be honest. I don't think we want to do it, though, but... I think we actually stay on sensors. I've been meaning to experiment more with staying on sensors because I think long term, it allows you to keep the industrialists in power for longer, and I actually think that this is a significant concern. Trade unions just become insurrectionary even though they're plus three. What gives, man? Migration controls? Come on. Could reduce taxes more. See, the thing is, is like, generally reducing taxes to increase migration is good. We get so much benefit from like our other stuff that like maybe it's not a big deal, but I think being on this 90 mark is good. So we'll just stay where we're at. Otherwise we would increase taxes here, I think, so we could construct more. I think we want to construct more anyways. Just not gonna add too, too many of these. And I know that like, there's a very obvious problem here. We're out of labor, basically. We're out of labor. Okay, you... This happened before, where we turned on the railroads and we immediately encountered a problem. They're both on auto expand. Yeah, such a good place. How do you get multiculturalism? I find it's nearly impossible with the new update. I have a video on that. Uh, you can look for it on my channel. It's like one of the more recent ones. But uh, the short answer to your question is you uh, recruit generals uh, until you have exactly one popular general with a trait you want. Like, for example, humanitarian uh, and then what you do is you will take the the party or the guy who uh the interest group to whom that general belongs and you will exile the leader and then uh the person the most popular general or a popular general will take over the ig and then you slot them back into government and so that's why um we just got lucky and handsome but that's why we have like four generals everywhere is because we went through recruiting looking for a ton of generals and you can do the same with admirals and that's why we have a bunch of admirals with fleets that have zero units in them because we are looking for that but it's very consistent yeah extreme handsomeness yeah this is the real answer also the rome video is so good i hope you find more ideas to rp like that long live crassus yeah the crassus one is very painless because it's kind of us playing normalish but also like if i'm rping rome 
the what hurts on Rome is actually staying on wealth voting. That's actually like so painful. I don't think we need them to have more. No. Not our baby boy. Low key want to load just to like try and declare this war. We're not going to do that, but I super want to. Because <laughs> look, now cost more infamy. No, it costs 20% more. It's actually 25% more. It's substantially more infamy. We should have just rolled the dice. Shit, man. He was so old. We had it for so long. Alright. Since we're getting multiculturalism, let's actually come in and try and make sure that people have no migration controls. All of our subjects. So that we can take- we can steal their pops. Slavery is banned here. Tenant farmers, free trade. What can you swap onto? Serfdom? Don't like that. Alright, well, you're gonna keep what you got. Mapuche gets wrecked by Argentina. We love to see it. Can't form Rio de la Plata yet, because it's split amongst people who have not yet colonized. Their strata is determined by their jobs, not SOL. Their strata, but their wealth level is determined. I'm not sure what you're correcting on. Oh, you're talking to someone else, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An idea in RP is, like, to act like you're the man in charge of the government. Well, I think you're, like, the spirit of the nation, even. Because then it doesn't make sense for you to ever do anything other than try and preserve your own power. Like, you would never want anyone to leave government ever, right? Like, if you roll a monarchist president, you try and roll back to monarchism. Yeah. Any idea what 1.6 will drop? I do not know. My guess would be towards the end of February. And I think that the DLC is going to be pushed back to April. Do we have populating? Nope, we don't have that. So. I'm going to tax porcelain. And then we're going to be able to afford a little bit more construction. We're going to look at upkeep. Do some of that. Are you going for any achievement with this run? Not specifically, but I mean, we could take a look. Form the Federation of the Andes, so we could try and do that as Paraguay complete the expanding Paraguay and populating the Americas journal entry. Expanding Paraguay? I'm not sure we can expand Paraguay. I feel like Paraguay's been pretty pretty properly expanded, to be honest, so I feel like we failed that journal entry somewhere. I feel like we've somehow failed that, or we have to do the Paraguayan nation, which we don't want to. What's going on? Oh, let's use our Shadow Realm army for this. We built you for one reason. One reason only. <laughs> to handle uprisings. on in 
investment banks here. Yeah, I would be... Ooh, looks like they are starting to colonize down here, is Argentina. But yeah, hopefully it's sooner. I really hope that they fix this bug in the thing. This bug's really frustrating. This bug, like, low-key makes me not want to play. And sometimes... So... Oh, we're involved in a play. Yeah, so we're just decaying down. Should have gone for Brazil when we could have, before that guy died. Now we're just gonna wait until we have, like, at least a 60% chance on the world. I used to think that event was really stupid because it seemed like one option and one strictly worse option, but there's more options you can get if you have different, like, laws. Like, I think Secret Police gives you the most options. What companies do we even have right now? Gold. Gold and mining. Once we take Brazil, wouldn't hate the wood company, to be fair. I mean, we're researching a new company right now, so we could just go to the wood company. We could also go to something else. We also don't have the Bolivian company yet, but I think that we would actually want to use the electricity company. No, not not yet yet. Actually, you know what? I think electricity kind of sucks. Let's do this. I think it sucks until you're until you just kind of get all the electricity stuff all together. So I think that we would want to maybe do something like this. terms of our research. Oh, well, if we don't have steel railway cars, we can do that next. Let's do that before malaria prevention. Yeah, yeah. I think I like this. Solidarity. Do love me some of that. We're just going to declare neutrality here. Oh, we have most of our academics in Bajo, Paraguay. For whatever reason, I thought our capital was in Buenos Aires. It's not. It's here. We just made a bunch of radical intelligentsia, guys. No, our, not our gumdrop buttons. Oh. New election. This guy's brave. Interesting. The humanitarian is in charge, which will give us an extra 5% chance. Unfortunately, we're not as legitimate. Ooh, what's this about? Let's increase this stuff back to normal. Yeah, just kind of farming the bonuses by keeping the taxes, keeping us above 90 legitimacy. But with the intelligence here, guy, maybe now the trade units don't have enough power yet. Is there a reason you uh, you don't just turn off Autonomous Pool? Yes, I think the game's a better simulation with it, and more enjoyable, and more nuanced, and interesting. But the bug is frustrating. That's why, the, that's why on the Rome run we're not playing with it. We do turn it off. Ooh, looks like U USA bought this territory. So maybe we have to go for California soon. They're protective right now, too. So that would kind of ruin our relations, but we are about to get multiculturalism. Yeah. Let's see what multiculturalism is. You guys let me know what you think. Alright, we're gonna do- this event is also insane, the Open Arms event, or the New Colossus event, rather. Um, come one, come all, 25% migration permanently. Which you- you have to have a bunch of other laws, multiculturalism is kind of usually the last one you get. And now... I don't even think there's a single law- oh no no, we wanted to go commercialize agriculture, but let's just take a quick look. We also want to go, at some point, 
regulatory bodies. Let's go commercialized agriculture first here. Landowners are unhappy. Wah. Wah. Gotta take out one of those. Maybe we don't need to greener grass and Fristat. And encouraging resource industry in this place is gonna fall off a little bit, but mm, maybe it's okay. Yeah, we'll leave it for now. That's kind of on the chopping block for us though. Mappy affects areas with low agriculture slash resources, yeah. I think that, like, one thing I liked about the, the Victoria Tweaks mod is it, like, rewards you for having, like, ports, for example, where ports give the mappy bonus. I kind of think it's nuts that you get a mappy bonus for the rivers when, like, what the rivers are is just, like, kind of inland ports, but, like, so, for example, the Rhine River is giving 5% market access price impact. But you're telling me that this makes it easier to access resources and such than being, like, the Port of London? I don't think so. It's like chat thinks it's based. We are running a ton of extra convoys, so let's actually take a look what trade routes we have running. Did I just misclick a whole bunch? Yeah, I did. What the hell? Something's amiss. Something's not right in the state of Austria. don't want to promote the consumption of tobacco, we'd prefer to promote the consumption of opium. And then I don't think we're going to be able to export too much. Ooh, we can export to the Russian market. Alright. some of that. I don't think we have too much sulfur. Looks like we could export a lot, though. Piedmonts. Needs wood. Oh my god, we're getting close to filling out the construction queue. Have you done a build where you build uh, off of max earning rather than mappy and economies of scale? It'd be interesting to see. I mean, sometimes we use it as a heuristic. We're using it in the Rome one quite a bit, because it's a little bit uh, tough. But this is how we used to play way back in the day. We used to play a lot more like this, where we would... And to be fair, when we enter late game, we still play a little bit more like this. And so we just, like, cruise through these, and we're just like, what are the earnings? Um, the problem is, is, like, when you, you understand, like, other aspects of the game, we could build this in free stat. Um, like, building based on this, like, becomes much less useful. Like, for example, the food industries will over-report earnings relative to how much you want to build them, because... It's going to cost, this is the earnings per building, right? It's not earnings per construction or earnings per laborer. And earnings per construction or earnings per labor is actually the important thing. And so you have to filter this through an understanding that, like, um, uh, food industries, even though this is, like, 2K uh, on the earnings, they require way more laborers. And we're, like, out of peasants. So building these up wouldn't be that good. Um, or it, it's not as good as it appears. And furniture would actually be a lot better, even though it's almost the same. And so, like, we could build up the furniture a little bit, uh, for example. And it's uh, it's still useful to do. Like, if we're playing, like, absolute min-max, we would definitely use earnings as a tool to try and identify where we need to be building. Um, but with the understanding that you have to actually, like... Earnings itself is actually not a useful number. You can just infer a useful number by looking at earnings. Um, it's kind of the thing. And so, for example... 
This uh, looks relatively good, and we will build the ones over 2k, but you got to remember motor industries cost 800 construction, so on a per-construction basis, this earnings are not going to be as good as they look. And also, I think in general, there's kind of a little bit more pop-intensive, so... And so you have to you have to consider that. I should look at SMMP, uh, something signer mashed it multiplayer mod. It's an all-in-one mod that rebalances the game to make more laws than any playstyle viable. To be fair, I think the some playstyles shouldn't be viable, but like I think interventionism shouldn't be better than laissez-faire. I think interventionism is just a different. I think of it like traditionalism plus. Where it's just a, a better version of a law that's like a starting condition, but it's not actually what you want to be on or stay on. One YouTuber makes fun RPs in Victoria 3 called OPB. Have I heard of him? Yes, I have. He's. I was just referring to his mod, Victoria Tweaks mod. So yes, I have heard of OPB. Maybe you know me. You down with OPB? I would make that joke so much if I was OPB. I think we're probably going to take the trade unit's approval. Because we don't have their bonuses and we would like their bonuses. This guy's a Democrat. <sighs> He's fine with what we got. Modern nursing. Let's actually use the correct tab here. running such a big deficit. To, oh, it's because we reduced taxes a couple times. We would like to re-increase taxes a little bit. That's not sustainable. So maybe we have to get off of this uh, being that much over for a little bit. So we'll up the taxes. Oh, it's also because we increased government wages. Reach loading artillery is spreading, so that's nice. Did you ever form the Danubian state? I have done it. I did it in a Wallachia run in like 1.1 or 1.0. It was a long time ago. What's your favorite Paradox game? Probably this. I don't know, I think your OP Nervous Halls is a lot better. But I haven't played it in a while. But it, like, it's way more fleshed out, right? I like economics games though, so... Probably Victoria 3. But I think objectively speaking, like, Victoria 3 is not as good. Am I planning on making more videos on Victoria Tweaks mod? Yes, but not in the near future. Ah, we're getting the African-American discriminated pops. Hell yeah, brother. And they're coming to Bajo, Paraguay. The capital. We're expecting a lot more of these mass migrations, but uh, as soon as we got multiculturalism... But maybe our SOL is a little bit under what it should be. Oh, this was another reason why we maybe would not be making as much money. I think we do need to... Maybe we overexpand construction a little bit, but... Is it our trade routes? Is it that trade routes pulled people out of factories? Is that what's going on? I feel like we like just kind of got crushed. In terms of... Our investment pool transfer got crushed here a little bit. Income taxes went up, poll taxes, consumption taxes, tariffs. Uh, we wish they were on free trade, that's gross. Diplo oh, we just lost something from here. Yeah, that tracks. Okay, that's fine. I forget, we can't demand anything until we get our colonization rights. You gotta fight for your right to colonize. Why were trade unions revving before? Do they oppose multiculturalism? They do. 
everyone does now. Or they're neutral to it. Everyone on base stuff opposes it now. I think we'll take a save just in case of psychosis, but we're gonna reduce autonomy on them. Expecting it uh, more probable than not. Although that's like how math works, right? Maybe we'll also do Brazil. Alright, well, we'll fight this as long as someone crazy doesn't side against us. is going to side against us for this, are they? Even though with are protective and cordial. To be fair, I think this took us over infamy. Infamous. I think we're just going to... Well, if the U.S. sides against us, we're just going to bring in... The UK. Except the UK side against us? Dude. This doesn't make any sense. <sighs> doesn't make any sense, my guy. We're just gonna give him the Mac land. Instead. Like, I really wish we could just give them what they wanted when they get sided against us as well. Like, they're super on board, and then... And then we're gonna go for war reps and actually also make them primary. I think we'll probably revoke claim on the Amazonas if no one else joins. But we'll save our maneuvers in case the USA wants to join against us. Uh, feels bad, man. Russia sides with Brazil? Why? Ban slavery in Argentina? Can we just give you that for free? No, we can't. Of course not. Oh, and we actually have a substantive front with Russia. go for Alaska though. Going for Alaska is good. Do the devs solve this problem in the future? When you have an obligation to a nation and ask for a new one, it, you won't get it and it will remain one to them. I mean you won't be able to delete obligation. It won't be able to delete an obligation for them and can't do anything about it. Oh that is silly. I thought it deleted the obligation. Do you have the socialism tech? Trade, uh, change trade use ideology. I have no opinion on citizenship. Oh we might not. I'd not be surprised if we didn't. We don't. We're getting it right now, though. Alright, so we might go for Alaska. I mean, we're already infamous, though. I don't think we could... I don't think we could do anything too crazy on Russia. Although, AI UK claps Russia all the time. 
But how you, we do have no idea how evolved AI UK is going to be. And if we put war goals in Russia, they'll get really evolved. But they're already going to get evolved here. We'll probably stop colonizing this, knowing that we're just giving progress to the UK. Or actually, I think we maintain the progress and we just do our own thing, so maybe we just keep with it. We also want to trade something for this at some point, so we're going to probably try and do that after this war. Hmm. We really didn't want to fight Russia as well. We'll just float. <sighs> oh, we don't have interests where we maybe want them. Shoot. I think those will be in, in time. Nice to see the radicalism drop down when we stop discriminating. Even though we increase taxes here. Looks like Russia's sending some guys late to the party. We know Russia's really, the a Russian AI is really bad about defending landings. We're not in good shape at all here. Persia's gotta get, have their army there, but they're gonna get wrecked. They don't have Wargul there, though. They do have Wargul elsewhere, so we can actually ask for something big, because they have banned slavery in Argentina, they actually have to occupy it. I think we go for war reps on Russia to pause the timer here. Give a little bit more time for our uh, things to get added. We're going to get to release exactly one thing. Now we have a little bit of a choice, I think. I think we're going to do the wood one, at least initially. We have a ton of logging camps already built out, and the rubber plantations is going to be nice. Now let's go in, and... Uh, I think that we also come off of that... Uh, perhaps early or soon, but I think it's the best one we have access to right now by a very large margin. Is there anything that's under 10? No. Oh, bro, did we just not put in the plate? Oh, no, wait, we got our, we got our interests. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Mm, perm's not releasable with what we have. Do we just liberate Ukraine here? I think we lib Ukraine. TBH. And then we don't have enough... Uh, Oh, we could go for Amazonas or East Karelia. I'm not sure we would even really want that. It's only five, but... Let's see what's there. I guess that's actually a decent amount of wood. It would give it us a native interest in the region. It would give us a front with which to push Russia. We already have that, though, in Persia. So let's do this. You control UK by canceling colonization of Namakland. It resets progress to zero. I think they don't inherit our progress. I think they keep our own progress, and then we just keep colonizing new land. Russia doesn't need to occupy Argentina or anything else. It's bugged for subjects, bro. Well, maybe we can just try and trade the release of the Ukraine for the banning of it. We also don't care if, um, if it gets banned, right? So, we'll end the poll here. I 
I think we will kind of scrape the barrel a little bit more here, though. Marketplace of the world. Oh, maybe we should show us the bureaucracy cost because we're running a slight deficit. Probably not. Now the annoying thing is going to be, where is Russia leaving their guys? Stationed at Russia HQ. Dinnipur, Dinnipur, Dinnipur. Okay. So maybe we land Alaska to start. Or up here. We definitely need a much bigger navy. Maybe, maybe the play is actually going for ironclads next, instead of steel railway cars. Breach loading is not spreading. I really do want to get on malaria prevention pretty early though. All right, let's see if we can play a little bit of a rope dope here. Maybe we should split this thing in half. I think we're gonna need more than one landing squad. That's four months. Now we have this little one. Now they're defending the Dnieper in Russia, we are aware of. I don't think they're defending the Baltic. Do they just not defend their capital node? Bro, that's wild. We'll see if the UK lands. The UK almost always lands a uh, thing. You never have enough Navy at 1.5. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Why are you making such a, this much border guard though? What do you mean? Are we, are the borders really that gory? Maybe they are. Oh, are they not defending anything? They might not be defending anything. I think we like, or we actually don't like enforcing on Brazil right away because we, as long as Brazil's in the war, we can't get ticks below zero unless they have the Amazonas. So we don't necessarily want to enforce on them quickly. We do want to make sure we don't lose the Amazonas though here. Looks like the UK has committed a large chunk here. Yeah, Russia's got a large chunk there. So now you're leaving. Are we just supposed to land the Russian cap? Okay, we can't... This Baltic guy is too big for us to deal with with this guy. Also, just upgrade the size a little bit. Where do we have a lot of peasants? Tripoli and Cordoba. Where's the North African army? Fars, Outer Manchuria. We can make a second North African army just for landing. He's traveling to... This guy doesn't know where he wants to be. Oh, he's just going back and forth. Smart. Maybe this landing up here is a mistake. Kind of takes our navy out of the action a little bit, it feels like. 
Okay, this Indonesia army, I don't think it's going to be necessary on this front, so we're going to move it to this front, because we're pretty weak there. And then the North African army... I think maybe... Maybe, maybe, maybe. We give them some Lancers. And we look to have these guys land. It looks like they've pulled significant numbers off that front. And they're just sending, full sending this front or something. The Ted stack, I mean, is this the AI being smarter than normal? I think it is. It's just gonna oscillate between each front, then it should be able to pick up battles. But they're not defending up here at all. I guess we should have landed up there with our four stack. Looks like we're getting pushed here too. Oh, now they're abandoning here. Where's this guy going? He's actually at the front, but he's not visually there. This guy's traveling. They've left it they've left the bag. They have left the bag undefended, everyone. Bag undefended. You will get to. Uh, oh, that's because the UK keeps siding against when he goes for, for Bolivia. Yep. That is exactly what's going on. UK doesn't tolerate it. And, like, we don't want to completely wreck our economy in one swoop. It's kind of not about it. Like, to have a really, really rough war and then wreck our economy at the same time is, like, not the not the deal. Although we are kind of thinking of economic independence on some, in some sort of timeline. Look at the magical teleporting army that just now is, <laughs> just teleports there and then then... <laughs> Bro. They're at the Uruguay front. These guys are in Danubia HQ. These guys are in Poland to defend against naval invasions. What is this, dude? Stationed at Poland, stationed at Poland. These guys just literally appear out of nothing, right? And they're traveling to Russia. They literally were materialized out of nowhere. Do they not have any recruitment time? What is this? I mean, if none of them are defending the Baltic, it's not a big deal, but also simultaneously. Uh, this guy's traveling to the Baltic HQ. Do they just get to teleport their armies? I think they just get to teleport their armies. Or is... It, what's going on? Like, why is that... They just all reappeared over here. Did a front get bricked? And they just teleported back? I mean, I guess. Meanwhile, these guys are rapid advancing. Yeah. Alright, these guys are at the Baltic and they're ready to intercept, so... Maybe we have to land caucuses instead. Let's 
China and Caucasus instead. UK normally does a bit of naval landing on Russia. I don't know. I guess they're not feeling it. We also have this coming in. It's fog of war implemented by a bug. Yeah. Are we sticking below zero? We will once we enforce on Brazil. So it's kind of tempting to actually pull our main army off of Brazil. We're set it to all defend, but we're currently only pushing with one guy, so... But maybe this is... too much? Yeah, all the guys got teleported away, and now they're all coming back, I guess. And they're not defending against the naval landing, so we'll cancel this one, and we will send in the North African one again. Our 30 stack is also freed up, so we will move that over closer to where the action is. And I think that we will station this guy over here as well, with the idea of landing uh, Ukraine. Eventually. That's the eventual idea. Russia's, <laughs> Russia's uh, in a little bit of a trouble over here, though. I don't know why... Yeah, I mean, the AI... The AI struggles so much. Not even sure how worth it that is. Alright, so... Is anyone defending... Oh, we get another teleporting army. Bro, are they just getting to teleport their armies back? No, he's at the he's at the Minas Gerais front. He may not look it, but he's at the Minas Gerais front. This guy's going to Outer Mercia Perm. And then we get him for free here, right? Yeah. Uh, we don't want our navy to get bricked. So we're gonna move them down here. I'm gonna land here. So Russia's in bad spot and could get probably enforced on here. Let them struggle. They are too unhinged in the mid game. But the Argentina subject is so bugged. Like here? To be fair, we actually probably would rather they have slavery because this is allowing us to, them to get pops so that they can colonize faster. I think we're just gonna move this guy to this front. I think we're gonna lose that front pretty quick there. This one's advancing faster than this guy can catch up with it. It's grim for him. Grim for him. We are gonna put these all on defend front now. Just try and hold that front. Even though we have a slight advantage, the 26 stacks coming in. Alright, we've met some resistance up here. with this army. So we might want to start slowing down. We might just want to audible to being somewhere else. Looks like our allies are starting to actually get a, generate a push here though, because they have had to move guys off the fronts. Looks like everyone's moving to this front now. Is Brazil fully occupied? Not yet. That 57 stack's gonna put a damper on things. Why don't we switch to all defense? And at the very least, uh, our guys will slow them down, but it'll be a little bit like a wood chipper. Why don't we slot in over... Oh, that's gonna be take forever to go around, huh? Alright, we'll just stay there then. 
Now we're just defending this front. Just defending this front. We are going to be landing here. Return Colombian Amazonas. Oh, looks like they they landed Colombia. We actually don't care who has that, to be honest. Right, because after this, they'll each be the same puppet level. Or actually, Brazil's already a Dominion. They'll be a puppet. We would rather Brazil have it, so we actually want to give that up. Which is a bit of an interesting phenomena. Do 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 do. Phenomena. Do 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 do. Phenomena. Do 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 do. That's not the way that song goes. A is our boy getting in for free? They do get in for free. Good dealsies. So we will be able to push on a ton of different fronts simultaneously here. Looks like they are not doing so hot on that front. Yeah, they're just spending so much time in between fronts instead of actually on them, I think, is one of the big problems here for them. Maybe we are supposed to move this army over here. It takes forever to get there, though. I think we just try and lose this ground as slowly as possible. 72 stacks getting in on the cap. So. Ooh, uh, we wish we could have given Brazil the return, the thing. Oh well, not too big a deal. So do we want to ban slavery or no? Do we think they're going to get more pops from migration? Or do we think that they're going to get more pops from slavery? Mm, let's just go with this, I think. We'll keep this library for now. So now, if we could pull Ukraine into the customs union and make our own customs union, this would probably be a decent thing to do. Did we get Shadow Realm? Doesn't look like it. I'm gonna have to make a choice here in a second. I think that choice is gonna be malaria prevention. Commercialized agriculture? Let's go. What's our pop looking like? Ooh, look at that upline. That change in shape up right there. That's multiculturalism, baby. Should way more up. Okay, we did want to protect her at them, maybe. How liable is the U.S. to side against us if we do? I don't think they side against us that often on that play. It's the subsequent plays they do. One percent. We annex some of these guys.
Ecuador and Argentina. We think that we might be able to diplomatically do Ecuador, so maybe we wait. Also, UK has sided against us every time we've done it. Do we get Spectre Hunting the World this game? I can't remember. I think we did, but we it's timed out. Oh, return California here. We wanted to go for California. We still might have a chance to subjugate them. Okay, so... What our chance is, is if we try and subjugate them and make them a protectorate... How does this work if they back down to us? I think they still just get wrecked. I think we we're just slow on the punch here. Oh, that sucks. I mean, we could side against the USA, but I think we don't want to. When we released them, they didn't have this. They didn't have the contiguous land thing, which makes them less likely to do that. Ah. Uh, I feel like there should be a way for us to do something here. I mean, we could see if we could yo-yo sway. I kind of don't want to mess about with that, though. Oh, well. Are you at war, good sir? You must be. Yeah. Because you cannot trade. What about you? We would like... Dutch Guyana. We will offer you... I wish it showed what they would accept. This would be so much easier. Let's see, we have Inner Mauritania, which I think they would be willing to accept. I think they would take Mauritania too, but that would break our Mauritania. Like, I think they accept that, yeah. So I guess we have to wait for this colonization to occur here. Ah, oh, that sucks. That we're not getting USA or California. There's, like, no way we win this. Us just versus the USA. Or I don't think we can. Maybe we could. USA is actually a pretty nut tough nut to crack. We found that in our Brazil run. They, yeah, they're just going to have a way bigger navy, too. Also, even if we got California, to be honest, the US would side every play against us. And maybe this is, like, not worth the, um, the, the heartache. I mean, the, the, the headache. They're not even that strong right now, though. Uh, they're gonna be strong. Try the shuffle. I mean, sway. The sway. I'm curious if it works, I guess. I think we're not gonna do it either way, uh, but I wanna see if we can get it with the sway. We're just gonna reload either, uh, either way here, but. Some of this, and then. Now that won't allow it become subject. We could get an obligation from the USA by siding with California and then swapping USA. We're not going to do that either, though. Let's go, baby. A little bit more construction. We could also just kind of chill right now. We have a really solid amount of infamy. Once the UK is not in a war, we do want to trade for this. Maybe we want to even think about leaving the customs union. If we leave the customs union... Hmm. I think they are providing almost all of our coal is one problem. No, we got a decent chunk of coal.
we are oversupplying wood. Maybe that wouldn't even be that bad. I mean, looking through it, it doesn't look like it would be apocalyptic. This would allow us to be a GP as well, which would improve the migration attraction. At a certain point, if you're more mi mass migration based, it starts to get better. Because we have a flat modifier, right? Uh, if we look at the migration attraction, we have a ton of flat modifiers. We have like this 28%. And we get 10% from major power. That would be 25% an additional 15% if we got the other stuff. I mean, I guess a lot of our percent modifiers are from Intelligentsia and Teeming Shore. Hmm. We're also pretty close to where we want to end stream to, though. Sucks that we can't do anything about California. I think if we protect it, then it doesn't break the USA's war. Maybe it does. I guess we could check. Because the thing is, they're very likely to back down to a protectorate. So I guess let's maybe check. Oh, we have to declare neutrality here. But then I think we're going to be concluding the stream either way. So, I am curious about it. This breaks their war. I think it does, actually, to be honest. I think they're pretty likely, they won't back down to getting annexed, but they will back down to getting protectorated, so. This may be a station. Our fleet's in the right spots. In case we actually need to do it, do it. Nice. Minus 84, very pessimistic. So they're at war now, but let's see what happens if they back down here to us. So it's not going to be possible for us to occupy. They yield the primary war goal. So now the question is, is so the USA is going to keep enforcing them down because they're occupied, right? But it, what I think it does is it makes it so they get stuck at minus 100 and they won't capitulate to the U.S. I'm not 100% sure on this. do want to kind of check it out. This is pretty cheeky as well. Yeah. Nope, they just get them anyways, so that would have been a waste of it for me. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, here, let's get back to... Ooh, we get the hat at the very end here. Of the 15 uh, SOL hat. It's our favorite hat, except it's really not. Let's go back to here. Which I think is where we're going to leave it off on. So, um, I lied. The... Uh, the title was implying that we were getting power. We didn't get electrical generation this episode. I think we're going to get it next episode, almost certainly. I think we're going to go malaria prevention into the four electricity techs. I like this play pattern a lot. Um, almost at 15 SOL. I think I can, I think I can. Graph's looking pretty good. Great Britain's still like double our GDP, but they're flattening out while we're taking off. Because we believe in multiculturalism and they don't, so we can get the pops and they can't. I 
I mean, if these guys had no migration controls, that would be insane. If they have them. Paper Syndicate of British East India Company. That's a lot of syllables. Anyways, I think we are going to conclude the stream here, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Next episode, we'll be annexing all of South America. No, but next episode, hopefully we get enough territory that we can form Rio de la Plata. Uh, and then after forming Rio de la Plata, see if we can form the giant, massive, uh, formable here. If so, we actually might get all of South America sans uh, this here next episode. Well, actually, we'll be waiting on Chile and Argentina, but we'll be able to see if we will have gotten that. Because I think we can trade this for Netherlands, like once this colonization kind of finishes up. And I think that uh, we can trade the for the UK for this. And then we kind of have control over most everything else. Not Bolivia, but... Could probably... Yeah, tolerate fighting the UK. Take a look at Prestige. We would be a major... Or we would be a GP if we got free. Looks like. Man, they have so much more prestige. Great Britain's so strong in this patch. Anyways, 